Welcome to the Grappling We Re- See exactly. Grappling Rewind Podcast. Welcome to this week on the Grappling Rewind Podcast. I'm your host, Maine, here with my co-host, Josh. And we are going to get right into it. This week we are going to be covering, uh, basically previewing the 2018 IBJJF World Championships that are happening starting May 30th, but really the big 31st. dogs. 31st. 31st? I mean... According to Flow Grappling on the big article that they just put out today. Well, 31st then. So we are also going to cover the other half of the Sumo Basho, uh, the Hatsu Basho. The which last is, half of it. Which is just finished. It's the Natsu Basho. The Natsu Basho. Yeah, the Natsu Basho. My bad, Josh. Hatsu. Yeah, you know, you replace a letter and, and you're there. It's also a language I don't speak principally. A language? A language, Josh. It's going to be a rough fucking it's gonna show. It's going to be rough. So let's go get let's let's jump into last week's roughness. Uh this is our quote unquote news area. Uh we done fucked up. Uh, bigger than we normally fuck up because we're terrible with names and saying things and we'll say wrong dates so on and so forth. Uh this time we really fucked up and confused one person with another. And it was brought to our attention by the gentleman, uh, Matt Zilla, Matt Gillette, Matthew Gillette, however he would like to be referred to as, brought it to our attention that we confused him with uh, Patrick Ostrakravik or... Uh, Redneck Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, that. We we confused it. It was our fault. We didn't have all of our notes in front of us. Uh, we made a mistake. We made a mistake. We corrected the mistake, but we wanted to still apologize to, to Matt Zilla Gillette. Um for yeah. that mistake because it was not what we're trying to do. We try to cover professional sport grappling and jiu-jitsu. You professionally. Know, professionally. Um, and also make it entertaining and fun to listen to because it's not that interesting to listen to results just read through in a deadpan in a deadpan way. So we talk about matches, talk about what we saw, talk about walkouts and entrances and commentary, and we mess this one up. So we wanted to apologize for getting that information on last week's show wrong from Adzilla and confusing him with uh, another gentleman, Patrick. Patrick, so we apologize. Yeah, it was again, it was our bad. Uh he originally was messaging back and forth with Maine through the Grappling Rewind Facebook page. I sent an apology personally, you know, we we felt bad. It wasn't one of those things where, you know, we'll say, yeah, we didn't like this match because it was boring. We didn't like this. But it's well, all stuff it, we'll stand behind if someone does if it does, right. it does get brought to our attention. Uh, and, this was just wrong. We did we right. had the wrong names. And what was what was wild was we had just viewed it and we were like, oh yeah, yeah. And then because we got into our whole roll of things and just bouncing back and forth off of each other, uh, we were like, oh, Matzilla, that's like that. At first, it just popped out as a strange name. So it immediately made us think of the, you know, the Gator Jiu-Jitsu, the Redneck Jiu-Jitsu guy. And we were like, oh, yeah, it must be that guy. And again, that's our fault. That's just pure fuck up on our end that, you know, we didn't go back and go, wait, no, that wasn't him. Let's go back a little bit and clarify. So, again, for uh, we apologize. We feel we felt really bad about it. We still feel bad about it that we did that. And this is something that Matthew loves like it came across in his message that he loves jujitsu it's his life and you don't want to put you know you don't want to put something bad on somebody that isn't theirs you know the the gator redneck jujitsu thing is that guy's thing good on him but we don't want to put that on somebody else especially if they don't want it so again our apologies sorry about that matt we will make sure that when you do pop up again, because, again, I'm pretty sure you'll pop up on another Fight to Win card. We saw all your list of accomplishments. We'll see your name out there. We'll definitely cover you, and it will sound way better than it did the last time. Also, uh, some people got the first version of that episode. We went back. We edited that part out. You might have version two. So you might not even know there was a screw-up. You might. Either way, again, our apologies. And congratulations to Matt on winning that match. On another note, where this is a learning a learning point where we're gonna try to we're not gonna try to we're going to implement better note taking, better you know just housekeeping in general, so we make sure that we don't do that again. We don't have these you know 
fuck ups. We're still going to mess up names because even if we hear them, we'll still screw them up. But we're not going to confuse one person with another. We're going to make sure that that doesn't happen again. I got nothing. That's I, mean, I agree with everything you said, man. So in other news, uh, the world championship, ch- blah, 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 the world championships are coming up, and as a result, BJJ stops. Yeah. And there is no other news because typically, if you're a newsworthy guy, uh, and the worlds are next week, you're going to be at that event or doing stuff for that event or helping your team prep for that event. So you're not doing fuck else. You're making weight, dieting, and every single article training. this week and training and every single article this week that has come out on all the major sites are world's predictions. These are the purple belts to watch. These are the brown belts to watch. These are the black belts to watch. Holy shit, there's a lot of women this year. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Just saying. Mm-hmm. We're ahead of the curve on that one for once. <laughs> there's no news. Not, I mean... Josh's wife had a many. birthday. Yeah, there you go. That she, wait, she's she playing this, is your she wedding playing anniversary this, yes, the week? Uh, exactly one week before her birthday. She playing the shit out. So it goes Mother's Day, wedding anniversary birthday oh and before mother's day it's uh the older child's birthday and then following is the younger child's birthday so i get hit like week after week after week so you got like week. six weeks of family obligations with the women in your life yes yeah it's uh it's pretty amusing and i i i, I get on her about it and she's like it, it's separated by a little bit i was like you plan this out originally we were going to get married on cinco de mayo that's my birthday josh i know it's the best of the de mayos <laughs> Hands down, Josh, the best of the DeMaios. <laughs> In other podcast news, I gave Josh a new rolly chair, so if you hear that, uh, I apologize. <laughs> I'm a giant child. This is this is so much fun. It's a fucking spinning off. It's a, it's a gaming chair, isn't it? Or is it it's a gaming chair? chair, yeah. Yeah, this is the best. <laughs> I'm so giddy right now. I don't even know why. Watch this. Ready? And away we go. <laughs> he just lowered himself by about six inches. <laughs> every, every, every week this is what i deal with trying to trying to record this show this is too good yeah so I'm totally it, let me now look how high this microphone is and look how low i am this is great yeah you should keep me at this level because when even when i scream it's not going to be too loud awesome so another show news um rule seven meal prep oh yeah how about that uh not really show news but maryland news let's talk about you being on Fight to Win 82 now, because it got moved from July 14th to the 28th. Oh, it's not 80, it's 82 now? Yes. Oh, okay, I didn't know yes. it had a company card number change. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're they're still showing doing shows, so... I assume they had a two-week break. That's why we, we, we moved. I don't know <laughs> why I assumed that, Josh. Making, but making assumptions. So here. if you are on Fight to Win Pro 82... Yes, Fight to Win Pro 82. Rule 7 Meal Prep will sponsor you. It is a meal prep company where... They have seven items on the menu. Everything has seven ingredients or less. And if you are in the area, they will sponsor you. If you are from the Baltimore, Maryland area and you're on this card, they will sponsor you and help you out with meals. That's right, meals. So you know your diet. You're, you're, you're a grown-up. But this takes some of the, the guesswork out of, oh, what am I going to eat right now? If you're trying to, you know, prep and you're in comp training and you don't have it will free up it'll assist you in freeing up some time so that you can put more mat time in more training time in more time in your camp that's not meal prepping and food prepping so get at them on facebook get at them on instagram anywhere you can find them rule seven meal prep if you applied for it start getting in contact with them and then if you get on even better because they will work something out with you to help you not have to worry about food. So this episode is actually recorded in two sections. Uh, we recorded the first section of the episode before the brackets have been released for Worlds, and the second section of the bracket of the show after the brackets have been released for IBJJF Worlds. Uh, we thought we'd include both of them because there are pieces and parts of each that we thought had some merit. So take a listen. If you want to jump just to the brackets section, jump to about an hour and 15 minutes in. So that will do it for the news section of the podcast. On to the results section of the podcast. And really, there's not a whole lot of results. We're going to be spending most of the episode previewing worlds. But before we do that, uh, the Basho for Sumo is over. Natsu Basho. The Natsu Basho. You wanted to say Hatsu again. I wanted to say Makaushi, Josh, because that's the word I read. Oh, yeah, because, you know, that's over there in front of your face. That's the highest division. Yes. There you go. Educating you. 
So the Basha is now over. It's complete all 15 days. Uh, Kisei Nasato is with Kujo out. for the whole Basha. Uh, Hakaho goes 11 and 4. Kakryu goes 14 and 1. And he won it. So it came down to the last day. Uh, Tochi Notion was on an awesome run. He took a loss. Uh, what was it? Day 13? Day 12 or 13. Day 12. Oh, late, he took a lo- loss. He late took a in the late Basha. a loss late, and uh, it was like, oh no! But he was, you know, tied for the running, and then took another loss. What he needed Hakaho to do today, Sunday, was to beat Kakryu to force a playoff, which is essentially they have the same record. They're both going for the tournament win. So if Hakaho had beaten Kakryu, Kakryu would be at a fourteen, would be a thirteen and two, and Tochi Notion would also be at a thirteen and two, which would force this playoff. Yes, and that would just mean that they would have another match, and it's like sudden death match. Here we go. This is what we're gonna do, and then we're gonna decide the winner. It's not common. Um, no, it's not frequent that you end a lot of basho with people with the same record. And most of the time you have the Yokozuna anchoring every uh, day. So you have them at the at tail end of the card. So you see like who's going to win. And then they all go against each other in the last couple of days. Today, Hakaho and Kakuryu went against each other. And it was, it, was a, it was a very good match. And it was really close at first because Kakuryu looked like he was just going to steamroll Hakaho, which is unusual. And it took all the way to the edge of the ring. They worked back in, and then Kakuryu just kicked it into another gear and got him out. Awesome. That's another, that is another Basho win for him. And a lot of people, including myself previously, had stated that they didn't think he was, you know, Yokozuna level. He just proved it again. Uh, My big thing this. Uh, Basho was Tochi Notion, who looked like a goddamn monster. He I mean, it didn't take a loss till like the 12th or 13th day of the Basho. Yeah, days 13 and 14, actually. He took a loss against Kakaryu, uh, but it would have been a cool revenge kind of thing if they met up for a playoff and then he beat him. But he did beat Hakuho uh, earlier, in the, earlier in the week, and it was the first time in 12 26 or so I think it was 25 meetings, 25, 25 or 26 meetings. meetings that he beat him the very first time which was amazing I am going to say he's a lock for taking the Ozeki promotion uh, I don't see why he wouldn't he's well, had multiple Takayasu was out the whole Basho and Goedo had a terrible was, Basho and he six dropped and out six. yeah he dropped out uh, getting into it uh Endo dropped out for a couple of days and then came back and looked like do. Uh, Ichi Nojo barely squeaked out an eight and seven record. Abi still sitting at the high division got a seven and eight. Not yeah. not a great record, but for a guy that's moved up that much that quickly. Well, not he terrible. started he started off so rough. Yeah, it was bad. It looked like he was going to go like zero oh, and twelve at one point, but he just, I mean, up until yesterday. He was seven and seven, so he could have turned it around and you know got his Kachi Koshi, but got Make Koshi, losing record and winning record. By the way, if you're not too familiar with the term, uh, the term terminology. terminology. I'm just saying term because I forgot the word terminology. So yeah, uh, they might drop him a little bit, but he's not going to go down too far. He he did very well. Uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, Ryuden not. Not very good. Three at and twelve. All. This Basho. Same thing with Diamami. Four and eleven. Not, not good. A lot of people were, you know, run of the mill mid card kind of uh, victories there. You know, a lot of eight and sevens or nine and fives. Chionokuni and Takakesho were ones that stood out. Uh, Koku Taisei, who was just coming in, ten and five record, great record down there. Miyugiru. And, so he'll uh, definitely move up. Yeah, Miyagiru and uh, Nishigiki, uh, that's the one I always, Nishikiji, there we go. That's a tongue twister name, Josh. There. Uh, looked good. Ishioda probably dropping down maybe all the way to Jorio again. 
There are a few of them. There's also talk of Amanishki probably retiring. He's up there in age, up there in injuries. Did not look good at well. He's at Magashira. He's at Magashira 16. Well, he just came back into Magashira from last Basho. Okay, he and went then, four and eleven. Yeah, and I mean he just. Almost every single match, he just tried to pull down and Henka because he, it didn't look like he had it in him. Although the last couple of days, he's looked great. Uh, just not now. So and he'll probably drop to Jodio. If he continues. He, I mean, so a lot of people... retire or go to Jodio. A lot of people were talking about him retiring. So who knows? It'd be a bummer. I always enjoyed him uh, competing. So we'll see. But that ends this Basho. Two months from now, we got another one. We'll talk about it more. You'll either skip this part or be like, this is interesting. And that's all. So that'll do it for Sumo. On to the 2018 IBJJF World Championships preview. Uh, we're going to start off with the Rooster Weights, which is pretty much the Bruno Malfisane show. Yeah, it's Bruno Malfisane's division. It's his division to lose, Definitely. honestly. Well, I mean, Ky- I mean, Kyle has beat him, and Kyle has won two out of the last 12 years. <laughs> Two out of the last 12 years. I mean, two of the years that Bruno hasn't won, Kyle has won. And they're always like that neck and neck. They're always in the finals or the semis. We always see them every year. But Kyle won in 2008 and 2013. The last time he won was five years ago. That is a lot of years, Josh. But again, on the other— Nine-time world champion. On the devil's advocate side here, Bruno's also been spending more time doing MMA recently. So that might help with his wrestling, but I don't, you know, you think he's going to be just fresher because but he's not. That's, that's, that's another thing. Like he has not been, I mean, he's obviously been training in the gi for this, but he has not been running into like all of these guys repeatedly going over and over. And I so you think heard, that'll help him. It may. I've heard other competitors talk about competing against Bruno Malfi and just being like, he is so small. He just, gets underneath of you you can't stop that from happening so so it's his division to lose but register for the division we have bruno malfi sane we have kyle Terra, we have tomoyuki hashimoto who was a thing looked awesome oh, he's looked year. really good this year he's he had a he's had a couple banger matches with kyle back and forth back and forth back and forth think where kyle won like an ad in like the last dying seconds of the match recently um but he took third place last year so i think i think we'll see kyle Bruno and Hashimoto on that podium again. There is a lot of people in this division, though, that you can't count out. I mean, even Hiago, I don't, Hiago Gama might bow out to Bruno if they're on somewhere in the same side bracket. They're both alliance. But if not, like if he takes it to somebody, he might be in there. There might be a closeout at Rooster. You never know. But then you have Lucas Pinheiro uh, from Atos. Carlos uh, Perez from Bering, again, Cayo. I wonder, this is what confuses me, and he signed up for it at Pans yep. as well. Tomiyuki Hashimoto is under Brasa, but trains at Carpe and Diem. And he's competed under Carpe Diem, so either one of three things is happening. I don't think he's moved, but he could have moved. They could be going for some team points thing. Maybe. Or... There could be some, you know, Maybe, some other option. I think Carpe Diem's name pops up. I'm, I'm. It's a real weird situation that we're not, we don't know what's going on. So we don't want to say one thing or another, and you know, just make ourselves look stupid. Anyway, uh, you, Claudio, uh, Henrique de Souza, Andre, Verdemer, Eduardo Barboza da Silva, Nibiru Sawada, Nobuhiro Sawada, Koji I Shibamoto. Call him the wrong name. Uh, yeah, I'm, nobody's surprised. Yeah, there's uh, 17 people in Rooster Weight. It's awesome. This year. It's not again. It's not a giant division, but still, 17 is nothing to. Uh, Rodney Barbosa, also another standout. Uh, Jose Carlos de, uh, Lima. There's there's 17 dudes. This is going to be a great division to watch. And just so you know, every uh, every division that has more than nine competitors, you'll start seeing their matches on Saturday. And Ooh. that'll leak into uh, Sunday. But pretty sure every single yeah. male division is more yeah, than every, nine competitors. Every male has nine divisions. Every male division has more than nine. I think uh, half the female divisions do. So, yeah, 
there Saturday, Sunday. Those are the main days black belt wise that you're going to watch. If you have other people from your team or you're just interested in watching all those crazy blue, purple and brown belts. I'll definitely catch try, try to catch some of the brown Friday, belts. Friday, Saturday. Yeah, because I think some of the brown belt finals. Again, I think we're going to see, as always, we see a lot of on the podium promotions at purple and brown. Yeah. We're going to see a lot of guys that are winning the winning the worlds of brown, getting promoted to black on the podium at worlds. I think if uh, Cobrina's son, Kennedy, wins at brown, he might get promoted. I you don't know. So? I don't know the time frame of his promotions. It might be too soon. Well, even if it's too soon, do you think they'll do it on the podium and they just will sit out for a little bit and then? Maybe. I don't know. Not 100% sure. But let's get back into this. The male black belt light feather division, which was won by Mikey Musumeci last year. And he is back in there. So. Well, he's also the first world, uh, sir, sorry, first American to win since Lovato in 07. So it was a 10 year break. Be basically between anyone anyone Brazilian not winning. Sorry, that was not English at all. It was a 10-year break between Americans winning a division of the World Championships. Yeah, but again, this one, you, you have your... This is a returning champion, so you've got all these people that are going to come after Musa Mechi. Uh You have Thomas Lisboa, Gabriel uh, Marias. Those are both from Alliance. You also have Ed, uh, Edward Lisboa. I'm assuming they might be related. Yes. Uh, All Alliance. And then you have Atos guys like Ari Farias, uh, Pablo Dutra, Kleber Fernandez. You know, now we're moving into other people. Again, under Brasa, Michael Musumeci, uh, Rene Lopez in there. You have Alexandre uh, Vieira. Who else do we got? Uh, Tadashi Takashima from Boston BJJ. Carpe Diem. See, Carpe Diem Hope. Maybe... I don't know that that's it's still weird to me. Kazuhira Miyachi, uh, Miyachi, Miyachi, Miyachi. Yes, I'm gonna stick with that. Miyachi from Carpe Diem Hope. Here's another one where they second place finisher Zhao Miao from Cicero Costa. So they might have an awesome return match. Uh, names just you know George Nakamura standing out. Washington uh, Lima, Darson Hemmings, Wanky Che, Wanky Che. Uh, Luis Pinto, Yuta Shimada, Hiago George. You know, you see all of these guys popping up in the past few months in these divisions, gearing up for this. Mikey's a hard dude to beat, though. He is super focused when it comes to this stuff. Same thing with Joao. So I'm really, I'm just really interested to see, like, how it breaks down. And again, you have Ari Farias who just came off of that great performance at ACBJJ. Yep. And just real recently had that big point difference in that, in that match. Mm -hmm. Again, we have all of our former one, two and third place competitors registered again this year. We know last year where Mikey took, took the, took the gold. Joao was second. Ari Farias was third and Gabriel Marias. Marias. There you go. Took, uh, took third as well. So again, it's anyone's it's anyone's game, but Mikey is a hard dude to beat, and he's had a little time off. He just yes, but he just knows how to game the rules to the fullest extent. Like the way he plays, he just knows where he is point wise and everything, and he just he just games it perfectly. It might not always be appealing to the eye, but man, when he gets going and he just he just works it. It it it's exciting to me anyway. So that's light feather jumping into feather. I think this is the division one of aside from like the big boys. This is the one of the light divisions I'm the most excited about, just because we have a lot of new blood in here. And I wouldn't even say it's all new blood. I'm just saying that there's a high possibility for an American to win this well, division. The other thing is Cobrinha, no returning champion. Yeah, it's not registered. So we have the door open for basically a new guy's going to take the division this year that didn't take it last year. So Grippo's in this division. Isaac Doderlin's in this division. Jeron Neto's in this division. Kevin Maheka, uh, Oswaldo Moisinho, uh, uh Gabriel Oliveira, 
uh, uh, Leo Segario, uh, Segorio, uh, who who just had recently had great matches as well. Alexandre Molinero, uh, holy Gilson Gilson Nunez, AJ Agazarm's in this division. Agazarm, he's There's gonna just disrupt. so many. Agazarm's gonna disrupt a few guys and it's gonna throw people off. Megaton is in this division. Megaton is fifty years yep. old. I had to look it up, Josh. I went. He is what? fifty. Wellington Diaz, Gracie Humaita, look at featherweight, Megaton. And if you don't know who Megaton is, Megaton is Mackenzie Dern's father, but he is also the only black belt who has competed since the inception of the world championships. He's competed at every single one at black belt. Did he compete last year and the year before? Yep. He's the you old, checked? I didn't check, but I thought he See, did. Fact checking. I don't think he did. Ooh, I think he, he, broke the, he broke the streak? I think Think I thought so. he stopped competing at adult. I thought he was at Masters those two years. That doesn't count. That's not at the world. No, it's at black belt, though. It's at black belts. But he's he's been a black belt for as long as there's been worlds, which is 96? 96, 97. I think 96, 96 was the first world championship. 96. So he's ha- he's competed in world championships as a black belt since 1996. It's 2018. That's a long time, Josh. Technically yeah. 22 years. Yeah, 22 years. In this competition, and he's in the, he's in the black belt division. That's like, wild, and he's he's fifty. He's fifty. Uh, Samuel Braga listed in there. Marcio Andre, who again had that uh, who had that arm cramp that stopped him at at uh, Brazilian national yeah, Brazilieras, and that's why he went out in third. Uh, Silvio Duran, uh, Rafael Mansour from NS Brotherhood, uh, Luciano Arujo. Shane Jamil Hill Taylor. That is always a mouthful to say. Uh, but you have all of these dudes, uh, Izaki Paiva. There are so many guys in this division that could take it. It's it's such a wild division. It's it's literally the Wild West of Jiu Jitsu. Oh, yeah. Because Cabrina didn't show up again. There's like 27 people in the Featherweight division. First of all, Shane Hill beat Cabrina last year. I'm going to say it. I've said it before. I thought he won. I I still think he won. So, killer. Grippo, killer. Uh, you know, Isaac Paiva, killer. All of these people are just monsters. And, again, it's anyone's division. I think of the 27 dudes registered, 10 of them could take it. Yeah, easily. Yeah, so Easily. featherweight. Featherweight is an exciting division. Anything else to add on featherweight, Josh? No, but I'm, that's one of the ones where I'm going to be watching, and I'm going to be really excited to watch it. So, jumping over to lightweight, Lucas Lepre returns as the. Cha- I mean, between him and Michael Lange, they have taken it the past couple of years. Leandro Lowe, when he was tiny, uh, took it two. It's years so hilarious running. to see Lowe at lightweight. And we just recently, he's not been at lightweight. And well, yeah, he just seeing he, him as a world champion. Like, oh yeah, 2013, he was at lightweight, wasn't he? 2014, oh, he was at lightweight, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, going all the way back, 2007 was the first time that Lepre won it. Uh, Celso took it in in 2008. Then Lange, two years. Gilbert Burns popped in there. That's also shocking that he was at lightweight. That dude is big. I think he, what, he fights at 170 now for you. Uh, 155. Uh, one. Is he welterweight or is he lightweight? Lightweight, I think. But he's he's also oh he's cutting a lot of weight. DJ Jackson, he took that match at one eighty five, I yep. think. Yeah, yeah. eighty five from Marinas Open. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, fight for, to win. Um, fight to win. Yeah, that was yeah, eighty five. Fight to win. Yep. We're getting off track here, but Lucas Lepre is back. Michael Lange in there, so that's a duo that's hard to deal with. Uh, Johnny Thomas in there. There is a lot. There's six, seven, seven people from Alliance. That are just going to try to beat up all everybody, and they're just going to try to close out the entire division. They're going to take first through tenth, like it's it's going to be it's going to it's going to be wild. But my my personal pick for this year from Atos, JT Torres, Jonathan Torres. You think JT does it? I, I I got this feeling he's just in the zone. You this you made you made this claim at our first at the at last show of 2017. You went. I got a feeling that JT Torres is going to take the world championship. And then what did year. he do? He won pans. He did win pans. So I'm I'm waiting. I'm waiting for him to win this world championship. In there with him to help him out. 
Mike, uh, Michael Lira and Alex uh, Gisbert, all from Atos Jiu-Jitsu. Also, another sleeper who we saw at Europeans put in work, Masahiro Iwasaki. But he's from Carpe Diem. He's not from Carpe Diem International, not from Brasa, not from Kayo. He's, he's, list- he's listed as Carpe Diem. So, again, I have no clue why. Um... I don't know either. I'm not, I'm, I, I don't want to get into it. <laughs> Uh, Czech mat, the Czech mat trio, Gabriel Pontes, Hanato Canuto, Marcelo Mafra. Canuto is a new addition to mm-hmm. the Czech mat team. Yes, he is. But still going to be awesome. He's a great competitor. Mafra is like a steadfast. Uh, you have Francisco Itur... Uh, I always mess up. Itur Ald... I don't know. Sinestro. That's his name. That's what they call him. <laughs> Jake McKenzie from GF Team. Uh, Vitor Oliveira. Najbi's in this division. Well, I'm going off these GF team guys, but, you know, you know, McKenzie looked great last year. Vitor Oliveira is a steadfast competitor. Again, Najmi, who's, you know, back in that upswing. In there is teammate uh, v- uh, v- Victor Silviero. I am just stumbling and bumbling. You have a rough time with the names today, Josh. You're pulling a me. I know. Uh, Espen Mathieson is in there. You've oh, there are so many. This is a thirty-five person division. Celso's in there. He's yep. won it before, so mm-hmm. it's really these are more. Man, Celso won it back in 08. Yeah, and I think oh six or oh six. Yeah, oh five. Oh five. Oh six and oh eight. Yeah, Celso wins it. So man, there's just again, there's so many. I love this. Why I love the worlds because every year you're like, this is the one that if you train in the gi, you show up for. Oh yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm really excited about and this. I'm I'm so excited about it because every single year we always get like six highlight matches. We're like, did you see that? It's like an ADCC year, but we get it every year. Yeah, it's great. Uh, oh, we left out uh, Tommy uh, Pulkenen too. I'm not, these are like newer black belts to the to the edition of Worlds, so it's also very interesting to see what they do because it's not out of out of the realm of possibility that a first year black belt wins Worlds. No, it's not Nicholas Mergali. Yep, I mean it's like, that's what I'm saying. Like it's rare, but like it it we'll, happens. We'll see. And, so and as great as you can speculate all you want, and other people have done their speculations and put them out. It doesn't matter. This is what we think. We could be totally off off the mark, we like we are. have been before. But I made whatever. Some prediction at the Europeans that I listened to that show again. I was like, oh, those were very wrong predictions. Yes, some yes, people didn't did. show up that I thought we were going to win. Exactly. So. Jumping over to middleweight, uh, uh, again, my my pick for this division is Isaac Bahens. Isaac-y. I keep hearing multiple different uh, enunciations of the name, and sometimes they I call— I think it's Bahens. Well, no, no, no. I'm, now I'm talking about his first name. Like, at first I thought it was isaac and I hear some people say isaac and then I hear people say Isaac. I'm like— Ugh. Look, I'm going to go with Izaki Bahens. Okay, we're going to go with that. That's my pick for middleweight. He is a monster. And you still have all of these other guys. You got in Marcus this Tinoco in this division. I mean, they're teammates, but that's besides the point. You have Claudio Calazans. You have Josh Hinger. That's right. We said it right. Josh Hinger. Uh, Rolanda Sampson, who's a new black belt, who's been a steadfast competitor through all the colored belts. So it'll be interesting to see what he does at Black Belt. Uh, again, here's another Carpe Diem. We're just going to keep saying them because we see it. Uh, Thomas Mites. Who else is in here? You say, oh. Th- would you call him? Thomas. You didn't Meets? say You didn't say Thomas. I swear I, I said Thomas Mites. You said something else. Me- for, you, said Tom- you said something weird. Uh, I, no, I don't believe. I think you're wrong. Anyway, back onto you know, the actual people in the division and you making fun of me for for – mispronouncing somebody's Josh, name. Josh, as you notice in this episode, I'm, I'm only pronouncing the guys' names that I know very, very well. Like Nathan Mendelson. Yep, and Dante Leon. Right. And uh, Jamie Canuto. Dara O'Connell in there. Uh, Gabriel Argis, who, you know, he won last year. So I know I'm picking against him, but I, uh, Izaki is, is, has been on fire. Uh, Majid Hage, uh, Servio Tulio, there are so Langacker, Tommy Langacker in this in division there. as oh, well. Oh, you said that one so well. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yago D'Souza from NS Brotherhood trains with uh, with 
Leandro Lowe. I, I brain fart. The other NS Brotherhood guy? Yeah. The guy that runs NS Brotherhood. Oliver Geddes, Ali Geddes, always popping in there. Always great to see him competing. We're trying to see that dog I, bar. Doesn't everyone call him Oil Guy? Eddie Geddes? Not Ol- Oliver Geddes? They call him Ali Geddes. Ali. Yeah. Okay, Ali. Ali Geddes. Oil. That's what they call him. You just can't read. Maybe that's what it is, Josh. You can't read. I, for years, I called him Oil Geddes, and then I realized <laughs> that it might not be oil. It's, it's Ollie. O L I. Josh, they, I, invert the, I invert the letters. That's dyslexia <laughs> for you. Is that, I realized like, that's probably just a me thing. Uh, his his name for years was Oil Geddes. And I was like, that's a weird name. And somebody said Oliver. I was like, maybe it's me. It's maybe probably it's me. you. Uh, who else? Uh, Thomas Keenan, who we saw again the other week, looking awesome. Felipe Silva. Manuel Hibamar, 42 competitors. Yeah, also, a, a, I think one of, I think this is the largest division, or are there even larger divisions than this? You make these claims before we, g- this is another thing that we should probably do a little bit better, is make numbers and have, have a to-do, so we don't just make random wild claims. I looked it up earlier in the week, and then I forgot. Yeah, I was correct. You're, it, yes. is, it is the largest division. You are correct. Still, a 42-person division. <laughs> like we saw what 60 something at the Brazilian arrows or a hundred something well, no there was 200 some odd black belts black belts total and we saw a couple divisions that were giant but again you need 50 points to be able to register for worlds as a black belt so all these dudes are either former world champions or have 50 or more points and that's not that hard to get if you hit a few of them yeah but you, you got but you it. still gotta hit a few and win a few like opens well yeah I mean you're gonna you're gonna compete right yeah but i'm saying like all these guys like all of these guys are active competitors in the last couple of years to have enough to be able to accrue enough points to go into this so all of these guys compete and win i think it's just cool i think it's, it's not an open i just i'm amused that you're kind of shocked that people can amass points like they don't you don't ever compete except for worlds this is when we see you that only that one time i just and when you mention it like that it makes a lot more sense but i was amazed by it until you just said that <laughs> I was like, they anyway, win, like, repeatedly they win, and they show up for Worlds. Anyway, getting out of this before we go down a black hole of mainisms. moving on to middle heavyweight, the last year's winner, Andre Galval, who is not returning, and I'm not really shocked that he's not. No, he kind of, like, he looked okay at King of the Mats, but he just, like, we haven't seen him compete. Not a whole lot, uh, no. Not a lot at all. I think the last time we saw him at King of the Mats, and then I don't think we've seen him compete this year before that and then i think even in 2017 i don't think we saw him ADCC. compete. adcc was the last time we saw him compete and that was eight months ago nine months ago something like that something like that anyway yeah. we're going down again we're going down the hole mateus denise hanato cordosa tarsus humphreys that's the alliance squad uh gustava batista lucas hulk barbosa uh diogo silva Atto squad, Matt Layton. We've been talking about him a lot. I like his guard. I'm looking yep. forward to watching a few of his matches. Another ranked number one in UAE. Hey, let's see if we can put in some work for at for, for, Amer- for America for Americas. Good point. Uh, Hudson Mateus, who's been on a tear. Really excited to see what he does. Uh, Omar Saba is in here. Yes, uh, Gabriel Vieira. Uh, Bruno uh, Oliveira, man, I am just eating myself up. John Rickle, Viking Wong, Orlando Montero, also another like steadfast competitor that's going towards the championships. Really interested to see where he's coming from. Uh, Mateus, uh, I always fuck this name up too. Spirandelli, there we go, yeah. Uh, from NS Brotherhood, Nick Schrock, Charles Negramonte, who we talked about a lot. Diego, uh, Diego yeah, Negromonte had a, had a victory over uh, Craig Jones in the Euros, I think, in like the first or second round of the Euros. That's why we're talking about him. Nogi Worlds. Nogi Worlds. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. We, we we said it was the Europeans, or you said it was the Europeans, or something like that. It was Gee. Like we fucked it up completely. Yes. And I had to go back and look, and I was like, yeah, it's completely wrong. Yeah. Uh, someone else that I did not expect to be in there popped up. DJ Jackson. I'm not saying he doesn't compete in the gi, but I just didn't really expect to see him. Yo, is that his name? Yes. I've literally never seen DJ Jackson's name written out. Delonzio Jerome? Jackson. Yeah, I never, I don't know, I thought You've his name never was... seen that? No, I've never seen it. Or I've seen it, I've forgotten, I haven't recognized it was DJ Jackson. 
where I've read the names list individually because I always, pretty much for everything aside from IBJJF, he is listed as DJ Jackson. His full name is never listed. Even when I look up his record for other stuff, like you type in DJ Jackson and that's who shows up. Got to look a little harder, so his I name guess. Is Del- What's his name? Delonzio. Huh. The more you know, Josh. Jerome. Yep. So there's 25 people in this division. Can't and- forget about Marillo Santana. Oh, snap. That is him. The deepest voice in jiu-jitsu. The mm-hmm. Barry White of jiu-jitsu. Fucking love when he talks. It's, You've mentioned Josh before. I know. Many a time. And I will mention again. You love listening great. to him coach at Fight to Win. Good. Oh, Good. It's, oh, it's, so, it's so deep. And I, I enjoy watching him compete. He's a steadfast competitor. It is fantastic watching him compete and watching his like tripoding game and his half uh, how he works half guard and guard and things like that. It's really awesome. Now, heavyweight, black belt. Nicholas Mergali won heavyweight last year. First year of black belt, won at heavyweight. Uh, we just saw him which, recently. Which, by the way, if you don't know, that is some of the craziest shit to ever it's impressive. happen. It's impressive. It's a little more than impressive. Like, first year black belt wins the worlds at black belt. People lost their shit last year about Well, that. and he beat Lowe, and Lowe had beaten him multiple times. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, still. Yo, he has the craziest game face I've ever seen. He all of the pictures really... of all of the pictures of Margali just look like he's a sociopath, and I love it. He just looks like he's got that crazy face. He has a, he's like that low stance, like and every crazy single, face. E- almost every single competitor at no. a high level. No, they look they look like stone face and like mm, they look ready. Margali watched... like, grits his teeth out and we... like does his face with his face. We watched Bones pace like a wild caged animal backstage at Fight to Win. And yeah. he looked like a crazy person. He did, but he wasn't. He was like he had an intense face on him. No, he looked Margali, straight up insane. Like he started Margali yelling and the, was like, he was start, Yeah, he did look a little. I'm crazy. telling you, sometimes you're just forgetting shit, and then you're like, oh yeah. I don't know, but in a, but in still photos, Margali looks crazy. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> heavyweight Demetrius Souza, Guillerme uh, Soares Santos, my pick for the heavyweight division, Keenan Cornelius. I could see him doing it. I mean, I, he's – dudes look good. His lapel game has looked crazy. We've seen him knock out high-level guys, you know, the entire year. He's been relatively healthy since after ACC. He um, did super heavy at pans. I just yeah. don't think he wanted to be as cut. I mean, that he doesn't look like he's got an ounce of fat on him mm-hmm. to begin he's with. He's in real, real good shape. But uh, I, I think he has the tools to take it this year. Uh Vitor Toledo and Rafael uh, De Lima, also from the Atto squad, to help clear some uh, clear some competitors out of the way. Adam Wardzinski and Jackson Souza from Checkmat in there. Helton uh, Helton Silver Silver Silva from Cicero Costa's in there. Patrick Gaudio from GF Team, uh, the person that might give Keenan the most trouble, Felipe Pena. He uh he's also in heavyweight. Uh Ignacio uh Gomez Neto. Who else? Who else? Uh man, uh Shanji. How can I forget Shanji? Shanji's in, in heavyweight. What what a scary dude. Mm-hmm. The guy's just competed. Yeah, and he won he won back in twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen and two thousand and eight, you mean, in two thousand and six and two thousand and seven and two thousand and Yeah. Yeah. I like how you said. Well, I was looking. I was looking at the most. I was reading up the division. And I saw him, and I did. I saw a bunch of gap, and then I saw him oh, again. Oh, he like did 10 win in 2015. Yeah. I was looking at the wrong thing. How about that? Yeah, he's a four-time world champion. Multiple-time world champion. He's oh, sorry, also seven. Got, sorry, seven-time world champion. Yeah, my and, bad. And uh, also, you factor in the 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 absolute titles. absolutes too. Yeah, he's got a couple of those. So, you know, Shanji's in there. Uh, Huberto Toraballas, as well as Tim Spriggs. Scary guys that you're going to run into. Tex Johnson, Aaron Michael Johnson, also in the heavyweight division. He's been floating between heavyweight, super, and ultra heavyweight. Yep. So I'm, cl- I'm glad he's, he's finding his weight class that he wants to hang out at and compete at. He's, he's great to watch. He's... We saw him a couple weeks on Fight to Win. Did we? Uh, we saw him on a, a super fight. I think it was Fight to Win. I, I could be incorrect. We saw him versus 
Oh, he has a big beard now. He's had a beard for a while. Well, I mean, he still has the beard, Josh. <laughs> I don't know. We saw, we saw him recently, so... Again, like, this is what happens to our brains when we don't have all of these notes brought up directly in front of us, and it's a focus on one thing at a time. Sometimes we just forget shit. Moving on to super heavyweight, Herbert Santos was the previous year's winner. Mergali is in this division this year. Uh, This is something that I've seen, and I brought it up to Maine, but I'm not 100% sure if we talked about it here. Jared Dopp on Alliance International. Did he leave the Hibera Association? I don't know. I'm assuming so. I Maybe mean, that's thought... where he's training when he's out in Iowa. Maybe, but I still thought. I mean, did he? I don't. I don't know enough about Dopp to know where he's moved to. We saw him on Sub Spectrum a couple of weeks ago in the Gi against Layton. Against Layton, and I don't. I don't remember what he was repping there. I, it might have been Alliance as well. I, mean, I don't know if I don't know if had a falling out or if he's changed teams or he's tra- training a different place, but he uh, he's not under. It's not he he's not listed as that again. Another thing like Carpe Diem. Who else do we have here? Guillerme Lima, Gutenberg Pereira, who we've seen a lot all over the place. Yeah, uh, Gutenberg just be... beat uh, Tim Spriggs. If I had to win Pro Maryland, uh, like there you a go. month and a half ago. Good call on that one. Uh, Igor Schneider from NS Brotherhood, Leandro Lowe also in the super heavy division. This is going to be another wild division. Uh, Jared uh, Popolo from Hibero Jiu-Jitsu, so there yeah. you go. There's that. Muhammad Ali from Lloyd Irvin. The, uh, ooh, man, Elliot Kelly from Yamaso BJJ. One of the smaller divisions. With 14 black belts. 14 people in it. So who 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 you pick for this division, Josh? What do you think? Ooh. Who do you think takes it? There's this is interesting thing. We don't see Herberth in this division. Is he an ultra heavy? Uh, he may have moved. We'll, we'll see him in a minute. But who do you think gets it done? I mean, I could see Low has been on point all year. Uh, Mergali from his previous uh, his previous performance at Brasileiros looked great. I think I think Low takes it. I I don't know. I th- again, even with less competitors, it's hard to pick. Gutenberg looked uh, l- scary looking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a big guy. He's a big dude, Josh. Again, I mean, you have all of these people here that any some of these are just a gamble, a roll of the dice to where oh, this guy's going to win and he happens to win. You know, Low might get taken out in the early rounds. Who knows? Muhammad Ali might beat Mergali. This is what I love about watching jiu-jitsu. You just don't know what's happening. Well, this is what I love about worlds, too, because guys bring, like, you have an A game, and then guys bring their world's A game. Like, oh, you can break my arm in half, and I'm going to keep going until, like, the ref stops us. Yeah. This, like, that worlds is a different animal where sometimes guys just show up and sometimes have put on, put on some performance. Gets 180'd. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get snapped in a toehold, and you smile and you look at it, and you're like, "I'm a, I'm gonna move on, and we're gonna close out the division," and then you don't. <laughs> Onto the black belt ultra heavyweight division. Let's see, Antonio Braganetto, who is you know he's been around for a while. I remember watching his stuff, having uh, some of his jujitsu DVDs because I thought his close guard was awesome. Uh, and by the way, Bushesha was the previous year's winner of that division. Joseph Moku uh Kahawai. We we had issues with this last time. Kahawai, I think it is. I believe that is correct, but I cannot say it myself. <laughs> uh Carlos Eduardo Farias, uh Yuri Samois, which is we I haven't seen him in the gi in a while. Did we see him at ACBJJ in the gi? Or am I an idiot? Or was another guy named Yuri? It might have been another. I think it was a different Yuri. I don't uh, know, Josh. Everyone's names blend together. <laughs> they all look the same in the gi. Uh, I, we saw him versus Gordon Ryan at Kasai. Maybe where he that's got what choked. It was. Yeah, that's what yeah. we saw him last. Yep, that was no gi though. True, but it, it's. I always love seeing guys that have been doing a lot of no gi come back to the gi. Anyway, uh, Luis Panza, Footlock guy. Awesome to see him in here. Boucher show, of course, popping up. Uh, 
Max Jimenez, Ricardo Evangelista, Tiago Gaia, uh, Alex Soares from NS Brotherhood, uh, Victor uh, Victor Honario from Qatar PJJ. I think he was GF team at one point or something he was, like but that. But he's been Qatar for a little bit now. Yeah, I he's think teaching I, over there. Yeah, because that's where he teaches now. Uh, Gustavo uh, Diaz, Elias from Hiberos, Zhao Gabriel Hosha from Soul Fighter, as well as Tanner Rice. He's definitely not an ultra heavyweight. I don't know why he's at this weight class. I think he just does it for funsies. I'm props to you if you can go ultra heavy and do it for funsies. Um, I'd die, Josh. But he's, I mean, he's big. Don't get me yeah, wrong. He's not ultra heavy big, though. But he's still like a solid 200 some odd pounds, something like that. He's definitely, you know, yeah, no, he's, he's, he's filled in from yeah, when I originally saw he, him when he was like a bi- lightweight. He is a bigger guy, but still, like, he, I think he's gonna, he's definitely gonna be one of the smaller guys at Ultra. It, it doesn't matter. It'll be awesome to see, awesome to see him. We also have, have Admelson, uh, Gobi Jr., and uh, Octavio Nalati from Team Lloyd Irvin, Brazil. I like how they've added that in there yep. now, as it's like, here you train with this team, but you're still repping it, and we'll call it this. So that is the men's division. I don't even want to speculate on who's going into the uh, absolute. Yeah, that was my next question for you, is Josh. Is what do you think? Who do you fuck. think takes absolute? It's hard to bet against Bouchesha. Yeah, I, to say the least. Yo, you want to? I want to see. I want a see, guy with ten world championships. It's hard to bet against him, Josh. Yes, I want to see a really tiny guy in the absolutes go far, though. I want. I want. Bruno Malfusain to win his division and be like, you know what? This is going to be my 10th world title in the weight class. Like, I'm the most dominant in my weight class of jiu-jitsu. He's the most Let dominant me... of any weight class in jiu-jitsu. Um, maybe no, I mean, he's, and he's, he's a nine-time world champion, but he's gotten all nine of those in one weight class. So technically, he's the most dominant of all time in any weight class. Yes, as opposed to like Hodger or Marcus Bouchesha, who have won a couple of them i, I want to say one two let's see one two three four five five they've won five in their division and then five in the, in the absolute. absolute yep so you know he and hodger are tied right now for like most absolutes and weight classes but if he does them both again he's the most winning absolute champion yes but i would love to see like Bruno Mafia saying just be like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going in. I physically don't know how that would be possible. I'd love to see it, but I'd love to see it. I'd love to see a meow in there. I'd love to see yeah. JT Torres. I'd love to see I mean, we're probably gonna see Keenan in there. We're probably gonna but see But Keenan's a bigger guy. We've seen True, him but well, I'm absolutely. just saying it'd be cool. It'd be cool to see Lucas Laprie, you know, all yep. of these other the lighter guys. And I know it's mostly dominated by bigger bigger competitors, but it would be wild and awesome do you know how loud the gym would be if bruno mafi sane did the absolute at all every time anything would happen everybody would explode it doesn't matter like we hate alliance it doesn't matter because everybody's gonna be like holy shit bruno mafi sane is 120 pounds soaking wet and he's doing the absolutes that's awesome and you know we uh, Maine and i don't hate alliance i was being some random guy that yeah, doesn't Josh like had his alliance. hands up like he was in the stands yeah so Mo- moving on to the black belt females gonna start off with the rooster weight division this year and we're st- before we start the rooster weight division let's get something out there every single division for the women this year has a full division has at least five competitors in it yep we- someone is not getting to take home a sympathy medal nope you gotta if you want a medal as a woman this year at the black belt level, at the world championships, you have to beat someone. Yes. That's huge. Last year, it was not like that. There were some divisions last year that had less than less than four. So this is exciting. This is uh, – Josh and I love seeing full women's divisions at the highest level. Let's go back. These aren't full. These aren't even like a full eight-person bracket, some of them, or 16-person bracket. But still – there are more women competing, which is great. You know, I have two girls. They both train jujitsu. I don't want to be like, hey, look at this division. They're like, oh, I can just show up and still get a medal because right now competition to them isn't 
Like it doesn't compute to them. So it's like, sweet, we just get stuff that we can play with and show off to our friends. Like, check out this cool looking metal. I don't want them to grow up that way. So as this progresses and more and more females get into the sport and reach that higher level, it becomes more exciting. That's why we're stoked about this. Now we're going on to the rooster weight division. The returning champion, and I'm going to butcher this, and I've said it about 75 times before recording it, Rikako Yuasa. I think I nailed that. I think that's really close. I'm not going to say it because my uh, my Japanese is much more poor than Josh's. Much worse than Josh's. Substandard? No, no. There's substandard and then there's poor. That's where I'm at. Sewer level. My people, Josh. <laughs> anyway, Auti Tamileto Brasa CTA, Serena Gabrielli, Tamirez A- Tamirez Aquino. There we go. Uh, Tasia Ferreira, Rayana Santos, and again Ricaco Yuasa. Six people in the female rooster weight division. That's a hundred and five point six pounds. Yep. Maybe Small women. they might go up to 106 just to make a nice round number. I no, don't they, know. No, they weigh you in kilograms, I think. Oh, no, wait. It's a, it's in the U.S. They weigh in. It's in Morocco. We have to use the, you know, not metric system. Well, actually, I don't know because, no, it's, yeah, it's point weight. You're right. I'm an idiot. Yep, they weigh you in with the gi and that's I mean, the don't get me wrong. Some of, the, some of the scales are set at kilos. Yeah. But, but they weigh, but they weigh you in. So I think it's 105.6 pounds is the cutoff with the gi. So these women are 104 ish pounds, 104 pounds on the high end, probably. So I mean, again, you're filling the lightest bracket. That's atom weight, right? Yeah, at women's for MMA, it's atom yeah. weight. So you're you're filling in the atom weight division roughly. Mm-hmm. Anything below that is technically called pin weight, but usually it's only used for um for juniors for MMA. Ah, oh. and then you have like boxing weight classes, which go below like minimum weight and other stuff like that. Not worried about that. Light feather division. Talita Alencar, who is returning, was last year's champion. But we have Livia Gluchowska, uh, Gazeri Matuda, who we've seen recently on uh, Kasai Polaris. Polaris, as we Polaris. saw her. Yep, and Gazeri Matuda is a three-time world champion at the weight class. Is she now? Yep, 2016, 2014, and 2013. I'm looking at the wrong division. I'm like, uh, where do you see her name? Yep, world champion. So again, I think we'll see. I think we'll see her at the at the finals with Alan Carr. I think we've seen we've seen them compete. We see them compete against each other pretty frequently. We saw them compete. I think at the Euros against each other, and I want to say that Matuda won there. There's so. there's just two. Women's jujitsu is even more like Wild West ish than men's jujitsu. And anybody can win at any moment because all of these ladies are super talented and super technical. So it'll be really interesting to to see who wins it. But I'm not saying those are bad choices at the top of the podium. Christina Barlin, good to see that her knee is better. We yep. saw her at that fight to win and she hurt her knee. So it's good to see that. That was only a month ago or so. No, that had to be like two or three months ago that that mm, happened. I think we talked about this like six weeks ago, maybe. It was recent, and we were hoping that it didn't take her out of the worlds, and so it hasn't, which it is great not. to see. So that's cool. Patty Fontes, again, see her a lot competing everywhere. Yes, that's Patty Fontes' full name. She's he, Maine is pointing right now. Yeah, I'm He's pointing like, so I can is... find on the screen where Josh is. <laughs> Right. Patty Fontes. That's because I'm going to read in reverse order if I don't do that, Josh. <laughs> I see it now. I was like, oh, Vanessa English is in there. Yeah, Z Yong is in there as well. Y X Shong. Y X Shong is in there as well. There we go. Uh, Sophia Amarante, uh, Melissa Bis- uh, Biscardi, and again you said uh, Vanessa English, Saori Shibamoto from Triforce. Fourteen, fourteen women in this division. This is a big division. For the women. Which means on Saturday, you'll see some of these matches mm-hmm. because it has more than nine people. Yep. You don't see that too much because the divisions aren't that large in previous worlds. Awesome. Oh, I just, I totally skipped over Amanda Noguera's name. I just saw her there. How about that? Featherweight. Featherweight, featherweight, featherweight. Maxine Thylen, last year's 
winner. Mm-hmm. Previous winners have been Mackenzie Dern, Michelle Licolini, Marina Hibero, Bianca Andrade. Mm-hmm. But Dern is not in it this year. so that She we, couldn't make weight. I mean. I'm going to make that joke. At 50, 50, 58 kilos? Shit. That's math, Josh. She can't make 115. No, she didn't know. She almost didn't make flyweight. She made weight in at 123. That's, oh, well, she might actually be able to make nah, this. No, she, la- she caught weight last week. You're not making it in two weeks in a row. 127.6. With the gi on. Yeah, good point. <laughs> so, Dern's out this year. Uh, Maxine Thylan is the previous winner. And, you have uh, Bas- Bianca Basilio, and there she is right there from Gracie Humaita. Uh, in case that Emil threw you off there. It, it did. We have a Ray Alexander in this division. Uh, standout prospect from, not prospect, standout from Lloyd Irvin. So, again, I said, I think, at the end of last year that I thought she could potentially take it. Uh, you after mean right after the, the fight to win card? Mm-hmm, after her match with Alan Carr, where it was real, real close, and she didn't get the decision. Uh, super close match. I think she's at that level. I, I believe she could take it, but again... This She's got to deal with Bianca Basilio, yeah, another, Heather Rafferty. A division of 12, another another big division for the women. Tammy Musumeci. Uh, there's, oh, man. Again, Maxine uh, Thylen. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, who's the previous year's champion. There's Anna Carolina Schmidt. There are plenty of women that could take this division. It's very, it's open. It's out there. It's going to be especially, awesome. Especially with Dern not being in the picture. True. Yeah. I, she just rubs me the wrong way. Uh, it's just unprofessional. <laughs> Moving on to the female lightweight division, that would be six total competitors. Louisa Montero, uh, who is in this division, was last year's champion. You have brown belt world champion Catherine Perrette. That was last year that she won that. Yep. Now in the black belt division. How she makes the weight is uh, no idea. Why are you saying that? Isn't Perrette huge? Like nine feet tall huge? No, like I thought she was in a larger weight class. No. Who am I thinking of, Josh? I have no idea. I must have got confused. You're an idiot. Mm-hmm. Uh, be, a, uh, be a mosquito, Jenna Ray Bishop. Six six tough ladies. Charlotte Von Baumgartner. We Laura Hollick, who we just saw at Fight to Win. Mm-hmm. Uh win by knee bar, right? Yep, I believe so. Yeah, one by knee bar. Or I think was it was, a toe hold. Uh now I don't remember Josh. I think they, they trade footsie. I think they traded toe holds. Yes, and, and she, then she won by knee bar. She won by That's knee right. bar. Yeah, and it was in the gi and it was a fun it was a fun one to watch because it was back and forth in the gi with no reaps. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, good match. So again, <laughs> Bia is a hard, hard uh, person to to bet against for this division. Catherine Perret, tough competitor. Same thing with Louisa Montero. So I, I think I think Bia takes it. It could be could be anyone, but I think Bia Bia's looked good. I think she takes it this year. And Jenna Bishop, I think they closed out. They didn't close out of pans. They competed against each other, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. I don't want to say. I, 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 I want to say they did. It was one of those things, but they met up. Yeah, they remember, was, remember they was met. It the absolute. I do hmm. not recall, Josh. We have the technology, but we're not going to do it. Nope. So Too moving lazy. on to the black belt female middleweights. Again, another big division with eleven competitors. We have Aaron Hurl. We have Hanata Morea. And again, Aaron Hurl, who we saw on fight to win against Catherine Perrette. and Aaron yep. Hurl looked smaller than. Maybe that's why I was. I think I thought that Perrette would. That's maybe where I flipped the names is because I know that Hurl looked smaller than Perrette, and now Perrette's in a lower weight class than Hurl. Maybe uh, we have Era Anna Era Anna Carolina Vieira, uh, Hadolfo Vieira's little sister. I don't. Uh, we always we keep going back on that, or I keep going back on that because Hadolfo's such a big name. I think true. I think it's not necessarily you know have a, you have a family of high level competitors like that. A iron sharpens sister duo, yeah. duo. Iron sharpens iron. But she's also last last year's man. I can't talk. Last year's world champion. So I think she was first year black belt world champion too. Wouldn't surprise me. Again, these divisions are wide open. The skill level is so tight with all these women. 
it could it can go you can go either way i think it'll be just really interesting raquel canuto samantha lee cook liana dietrich uh, who else do we have on here uh, amanda aliquin jacqueline Oliveira, cat uh caitlin huggins Catherine, caitlin huggins huggins who dog i am dying here yeah we're having a rough day today yes but 11 competitors i this is what we like to see you've heard us so many times say there's nobody there's nobody in the division what's going on well, we saw this. for uae a couple weeks ago they, even they combined the brown and the black belts and they had some brackets that weren't full that didn't have enough competitors to to around at a podium and so yes. that's why i'm so excited to see like what i would term full brackets for the women 11 competitors that's a that's a full bracket hell yeah Moving on to female, medium, heavy. Natalie De Jesus, last year's winner. She is in heavyweight this year. She is in heavyweight this year. So she is not going to defend her medium, heavy title. So you have Luana Alzugir, who has been out for a while. And she took what was it she took the 64 which would be light and then medium titles before she's four four time world champion 2009 2011 2012 and 13 in two different weight classes now this is another weight class that she's going in oh wow it's been a while i think 2013 was like the last 2013 or 14 was the last year that uh, she was really out there, but she's been a steadfast competitor, so it'll be really interesting to see how she does. I always have a hard time betting against a four-time world champion. But yeah. And no matter what division you're in, I always kind of look at that just based upon your previous achievements alone and go, man, it's hard to bet against you. And maybe the uh, added strength from the weight will help out too. Just, I think she's been at American Top Team training yeah, like they for have, MMA. Hmm, they have a real, real good strength and conditioning program there. I'm almost 100% certain because I remember watching Gazeri Matuda's uh, build-up. For Polaris? Video, for Polaris or yep. something like that. And Luana was in those. So it'll be cool. Uh, Alejandra Gonzalez, Andresa Sinatra, Monique Carvalho, Claudia Doval, Sabatha Santos, that rounds out the medium heavy division. Yep, it's a division of seven competitors. Again, a more full division. You have enough, so you round up the podium and then some. Three people aren't getting medals. Yeah, that's a lot. It's it's just exciting. Like you can't you can't go more into it. It's it's you have multiple competitors. You don't just have okay. We have to do a round robin or we have to do this and these people get these medals. Nah, dog. This is a legit bracket. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm I'm so excited for this week when the brackets come out. Oh. I'm thinking Tuesday. You thinking Tuesday? Wednesday or Thursday, maybe. You think that late? Maybe Tuesday. Man, why are you going to keep me waiting? I've, I've been refreshing the average JDF website. I know they're not going to come up, but like about once a day I'll go and I'll look. I'll go, are the brackets out yet? They're not out yet. I'm just going to be peeking at Instagram a lot, waiting for those handwritten brackets drawn out for the absolutes. Oh, those are always good. That, that's when I get really excited. Jumping over to female heavyweight black belt division. That was uh, Claudia Doval was the winner of last year. And she went down to middle heavy. So she traded places with Natalie DeJesus. So we have Jessica Flowers, steadfast competitor that we always see. Uh, Fernanda Mazzelli. Here's one that we've seen before in the bigger competitions, and we always screw it up. Yacinta X Wen Who. I think I nailed that one. I think you did. I'm not going to say it, Josh. And I always mess up her name, Maria Maliasic. You've been pretty honest. You've been pretty good about her name in the past like couple months. I'm going to run into her. We at a finally point got. And she's going to be like, "Look, dummy, this is how you say it." It's Amar Barbosa's wife. Yeah. So. Well, I think Malgasic. I've, I've heard it Malgasic. That's what I've heard. Probably from you, actually. In all honesty. You have not heard that from me. I butchered it when she showed up on the card, and you were like, I heard it was Malgasic. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go with that. My bad then, Josh. <laughs> uh, Natalie DeJesus is a, is a good choice. Jessica Flowers is also a good choice. 
Maria Maliasic, super tough competitor. These are all good choices for this. It'll be interesting to see how this works out. Again, it'll be interesting to see how the brackets break down. Another Division 7. Super heavy. Five. This is the smallest, weight-wise largest, smallest division at five. The rooster weights have more than that. So, Tiani Porfirio, uh, last year's last year's champion. Last year's weight and absolute champion. Yeah. I think... Uh, I think she is definitely the favorite. I think she's the top female competitor by points for IBJJF currently. I sure I know she is because they put out a they put out a graphic a couple of days ago on their Instagram that showed her as the top female black belt by points. You and your your graphics. Do I love graphics? I, I love infographics. They're the shit. They're so informative. Uh, rounding out the rest of that division and uh, Andresa Correja. Tiani Porfirio, as stated previously, Karina Santi, Vania Luconen, Hillary Van Ornum. That is the super heavyweight division for the black belt yep. female. Above 80 kilograms. Who this want, you want to speculate? Fire. Do you want to speculate on absolute or no? I think Porfirio takes it. Yeah, that's 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 a smart bet, absolute wise. It'll be interesting to see who jumps into the absolute. Yeah. Sometimes Usually, I get more excited about the female absolute for, than the male absolute. I like female absolute because you see a larger range of weight classes represented in the absolute. And you yes. see a larger range of smaller competitors that tend to be able to deal with the differential in weight and can get further in the absolute. It's also usually – it's always the largest women's division. And it you – know, it, for me, in previous iterations, it's because it's been so large, it's felt it's felt special. So you know, like, all black belts can enter into it, right? Yeah. How fucking wild would it be if every single one of these women went into the absolute and you had, like, a 50-person absolute? That'd be some crazy shit, Josh. Dude, that would be fucking wild. I would, I would say, if, I'll, if I'll I just watch, went, watch it, but then I'm going to watch it anyway. If I just went Nostradamus on this and every single woman jumps into it, uh, there's gonna be a big. I told you, so. man. It, it'd be hard to get some of the, some of the rooster women to get into that division. Rikaku, Rikako, Yuasa, calling you out. Jump into the, <laughs> jump into that absolute division. I look. I watch it. Oh, fuck yeah, I watch I it. So that that rounds out the female brackets. Uh, sorry, the female competitor list currently it is sunday night so the registration for that event has closed we should get brackets out in a couple days the show will release on tuesday and you should have brackets usually in the next couple days after that Um, you'll see an instagram post oh yeah we be posting we be posting so that wraps up a boring fucking episode of the grappling rewind it might not be super exciting to listen to Honestly, this episode, it's just a lot of speculation and who's who. We are putting voices to what you've already read on the internet before. But it's what we do. And there's not a lot of grappling going on this week. And you really don't want to listen to us randomly talk about shit for an hour. I love how the bumper for our show is, it's garbage, but you'll listen. <laughs> like, thanks, Josh. Like, thanks. Like, we spent an hour looking at the brackets, talking about it, doing it, and Josh is like, I mean, it's garbage, but you'll listen. Yo, it's, you got this far. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a be real. It's going to be a little yeah, tedious. It's a little tedious. Um, <laughs> Grappling Rewind, it's garbage, but you'll listen. <laughs> so in other, uh, put it at the end of the show, in other news, we're trying to get together a pre-order for shirts. For the podcast, uh, so keep a lookout for that in the next. You know, if you want a shirt, if you want to be like, "Hey, this is a dumb podcast that I listen to," <laughs> let us know. So we're <laughs> in the process of getting some pre-orders together for some podcast shirts. Uh, if you are interested in those, please let us know on some sort of social media: Facebook, Instagram, whatever, Twitter, LinkedIn. Twitter. You can find us on LinkedIn. Actually, you can't find us on LinkedIn. <laughs> don't find us on LinkedIn. <laughs> please, Google, I was about to say Google please, Plus. Please don't tell me that you created a grappling rewind. LinkedIn. I did not. Send us a oh, message on a YouTube. Don't do that either. We have an email. Uh, you can email us at the Grappling Rewind. Sorry, at info at grapplingrewind.com. Or josh at grapplingrewind.com. Or, or main at grapplingrewind.com. Or grapplingrewind at gmail.com. All of those work now. We got a website. We fancy a website that we don't really update or do anything with right now because we're not uh, too tech savvy. 
the time. Have... No, it's time. It's oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, it. I'm, I'm, we're both tech savvy enough. Website design is super easy nowadays, Josh. We just click, 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 do. It's time. Oh, like God. I got what's, none of it. What's what's the website? What's the website builder? Wick. No, 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 no. Squarespace. No. Squarespace. <laughs> we need Squarespace, Squarespace to sponsor our podcast. Hey, Squarespace. I just built this grappling rewind uh, internet site in five minutes. Do you see how easy it is, dude? It's <laughs> not that fucking easy. You know, like you can build it in five minutes. Like if you're a fucking savant wizard, you might be able to. Like you can get a splash screen up in five minutes. It says grappling rewind podcast. But if you want like our faces and more than one page, it's going to take you three hours. <laughs> Use code word dummies for ten percent off. Ten percent more. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really bad. We also threw together a little squad for Worlds to help us out uh, with note taking and viewing. And hey, you two assholes, check out this match that you probably won't talk about because you're assholes. So shout out to our 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 World Championship squad uh, that will be helping us out. Shout out to me apparently saying the word uh seven thousand times this podcast. It was bad. You're welcome, Maine. Enjoy editing. Yeah. So that'll do it for this week's episode of the show. <laughs> Again, Rule 7 meal prep, fight to win 82, July 28th. If you're from Maryland, get at them. They'll feed you. Hook it up. You know what's up. I'm Josh. I'm Maine. This has been the Grappling Rewind. See you on the mats. So something entertaining happened Monday morning. Uh, all the brackets were released. So this section of the show is... In the morning, after the previous recording on Memorial Day, and we are going to go through all of the 2018 IBJJF brackets for the black belts, for the adult black belts for 2018. So Josh, it's been about, uh, what, nine hours since I've seen you? And we're back. Twelve. Twelve hours. It's 9.30. Right, because there's 12 hours in a day. Got it. There's 24 hours in a day. Math, man. Not my strong suit. It's early. It is early in the morning. We have we are looking at the male rooster weight bracket stretch. Anything you see here that is jumping out at you? Kyotera actually having a match relatively soon. Like not getting a bye. Yeah, look at that. Like not getting a bye into deeper into the bracket because what was it? Uh how many competitors is that? I'm not certain, but there's two brackets here and Yeah, it seems like everybody Oh no! Somebody, <laughs> somebody has to to fight in to compete against Bruno Malfisane. So Feels Wada, bad so man. Wada has to fight in, or uh, uh, Alexis Berrigan, the other gentleman, the other gentleman from Henzo Gracie, Mexico. So everybody is automatically into the second qualifier round before the quarters. Uh, Bruno Malfisane is the only guy that. Uh, I think we see in this we have so in bracket two. I think we see Bruno Malfisane versus Tomoyuki Hashimoto. <laughs> Tomoyuki, Tomoyuki, Tomoyuki Hashimoto. I think that's what we see uh, at the finals for bracket one. That's bracket two actually, Sorry, and bracket feels two. bad for Tomoyuki because he's got to run into Bruno. Yeah. So, and then I think the winner of bracket one. I think in the finals of that we're going to see Kyotera and. We're going to see Hiago Gama versus yeah. Kyotera. Yep. Koji Shimamoto is going to, I want to say he's going to go forward. And I think Kyo's going to, hmm. Ooh, that's a good match. The we probably Jose end up Carlos with... and the Hadney Barbosa match. That's going to be a, that's going to be a fire match, I hope. So I still think Kyo's going to go through. I, I think we're going to end up with Kyo and Hiago and, and Tomoyuki versus. Bruno. Bruno, but again, we're going to see another final of Kayo and... Yeah, I mean, they're op- op- they're Bruno. in opposite brackets. They did it on purpose. Yeah, I mean, you're for two, wor- you're two world champions in the division. You put them in different brackets. Like, that's what you do. So, on to the featherweight, the light, light featherweight. featherweight. A little bit bigger. People actually have to go in. Uh, there's only a few people that got bumped forward. Michael Musumeci. Yeah, Hiago George, uh, Jose Barros... And then everybody else has got to fight in. Uh, Alexandre Vieira. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the same guy that they did the that BJJ Scout did the crucifix study on. He's I always so. Yep. He's always exciting to watch. So that'll be interesting. Um, hmm. George Nakamura versus Edward Lisbo. 
Sokoa. Ooh, that's going to be a good match, too. That's on, the, that's on the first round, too. I know. It's it's the first qualifier. That's what's going to be crazy about this. A lot of these people are are not going to go very far because of where they're placed. Yeah, because you're, you're running into top-level guys in your first match. Like, oh, good luck with that. Are oh, you running into Bruno Mafia saying your first match? Good luck with that. Yeah, and whoever from the uh, Darson Hemmings versus Eduardo Bottega match that wins... Uh, I feel bad for them because they're going to run into Ari Farias, and Jeremy Miao gets a bye into the into the first the round, the second the into the second qualifier, the second qualifier, as they put it. And interesting, he'll be going against either Wanky Che or Kazuhiro Miyachi. I think I think Che takes that. We'll I think we're see. gonna I think we're gonna see Jirao versus Those, Wanky Che. The 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 Carpe Diem guys in general are really good, and they're they're under the radar because where we are in the world we don't see them a lot but those guys when you see them they are money yeah where do we see wanky chair recently do we see him on fight to win or? uae uae that's what we saw uae, UAE. Okay. so and then who else uh yuda shimada uh washington lima hmm yeah so given how the bra- given how this bracket's looking who do you think takes it uh well it's going to be meow versus Farias, I believe, in the bottom half, and then I think that's reasonable. And then Musa Mechi. You think is, we're gonna get Musa Mechi versus Joao in the finals? I don't know, because Ari, Ari is that weird outlier where he can be on and he is just dangerous. Yeah. So you think we'll see? It Musa- would be cool to see. I just Musa don't Mechi see- versus Ari, but I think Meow is on that same level. With Mikey about game planning. Yeah. I don't see anyone to... getting past Joao. Wow. Like, every time he gets stopped in, like, the quarters or the semis or the finals or something, I'm just astounded. So, again, I think I think this is the year Joao takes it. I think he beats Mikey. You know he's taken it before, right? I think this is the year he takes it again, Josh. I think he beats <laughs> Mikey. My bad. I misspoke. You, you're thinking of Paulo, who was uh, would always do featherweight yeah. and then run into, you know, either Rafa Mendez or Cobrinha yeah. and... Right. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride for that. So that is the light featherweight division. Unless you got anything else to add, Josh? No. All right, on to the featherweight division. This one's going to be wide open. This is going to be because so Cabrini's, hard to Cabrini's pick. Because not there. Yes, but again, uh, oh, I didn't look at that earlier before I came here. Oh, that's going to be a – if this happens, that's going to be a great match. What are you seeing? For the, uh, for I'm the looking at, Josh. at Marcio Andre. Sorry. Marcio Andre and Shane Shane Hill are on opposite sides of the bracket to work in. Of the first of the one of two brackets. Of so the, bracket f- the one first of bracket. There are so many guys that are like here's Isaac Doderlin and and Endres uh, Mendez. There's fucking Megaton. Kevin Maheka has to go against Megaton. First qualifier. Now then you've already competed against each other. And why is Megaton ranked so high? Man, he's ranked fifth, by the way. No, I'm, I'm bracketed as number five. Because man, you got more points. You got points from '96 on. <laughs> you got legacy points. Those '96, uh, those 1996 it's points. It's just weird. He's those bracketed count for as 15. number five. Yeah, uh, it is. It is a little high considering that the gentleman is 50. It's strange. I, uh, I'm. I want to say Maheka is gonna beat him. But yeah, I think that's so. also like an awesome match to have as somebody who's been a black belt. For as long as the worlds have been around, twenty plus. He's been a black belt for twenty plus years. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, there are people that have been black belts longer, but, but he's, he's been still at the competing. Wor- but he's been at that high level, competing at the worlds for that long. That's crazy to me. Yeah. So whoever has to go against Marcy Andre uh, feels bad, man. But Isaac Doderlin's going to come in too. Ooh, he might make it a little far. Isaacy Paiva over on the other side. Oh yeah, I think this that's is a crazy. Bracket. Up, this bracket is exciting. The second part of it is, and they have Grippo awesome. on Grippo and Hill on the opposite sides of the bracket. Well, they have on two separate brackets. On two separate brackets, yeah. so they'll if they get far enough, they'll meet uh, in the finals. This will be interesting to see who he. Again, goes. this division is wide open. We have yes. AJ Agasarm. We got Gianni Grippo. That's we got the Shane first. Hill. I'm so glad I didn't. I looked at some of the brackets. I'm so glad I didn't look at all of them. AJ Agazarm versus Kishino first round. Yeah, that's a dude. That's gonna be crazy. That's an amazing matchup. Like, anyway, better yet, we get to see it. We are guaranteed to see it in the first round. So, this is this is the one thing. 
bracket two actually seems a little bit more dangerous than bracket one. I totally agree with that. Because you have uh, Leo Segorio, you have Rafael Mansour, who just won uh, Brazilian National. He beat Grippo. I mean, that was a really close match. Yeah. If you got to see some of those, he, it was really close. So, And they're, Leo Segorio, they're, they're slated to be, if they each win their the first thing. match. No, we'll no, see. no. No. Oh, Grippo's they, all the way over here. Yeah. So Grippo has to win. Uh, he has to beat the winner of Silvio Duran and and Jeff Cummings. And then he's going to meet up with whoever wins out of Gabriel Oliveira, Liam Ting, uh, Keshinio, and AJ Agazarm. So he's got to compete against no, one of those wins, guys. Who wins this match too? That's what I mean. Oh yeah. So yeah, you yeah. got to out of those four guys, he's got to go against one of them. Then he's got to go up through that, and he has a potential for competing against Leo Segorio, who's up there as a potential of winning, or Rafael Mansour, who also has a potential of winning, and he just recently beat him. So. That's a really scary side of so, the bracket. So who are you picking for this? Who are you picking for the t- overall bracket? You think it's Grippo, Mansoor, Taylor, or this is I want to see I want to see Marcio Andre versus Shane. That'll be an awesome match. I want to say well, I'm going to make a claim, and I'm okay with being wrong, but I just want to make this claim. Shane and. Grippo are going to be one and two. I don't know who's going to be one and who's going to be two, but I think when's they're going to the, be in the finals. When's the last time that Shane's beat Grippo? Uh, DC Open? Was it that recently? It was within like the past year. Okay. I want to say. Damn. Like they're neck and neck. Yeah. They're really close. We just, we've seen Grippo go through Shane a couple of times recently, and it's it's Shane. Well, with Pans, like it was right down to the last few minutes. It like was, Shane yeah. was up and then... Grippo came up and almost was completely on the or was on the back was almost choking him. Was he on his? Yeah, he was on his. I think I think he got he a really get down the, position. He didn't get the points. I think I think he he didn't get the points. He so got I think shook time, off, but it was yeah. close where he was on his back and he was choked. That's what it was. So he didn't get the points for the back, but he immediately started trying to choke. Yeah, because he knew he knew he wasn't gonna get the points, so he immediately went for the choke yes. to try to finish him, and he wasn't able yeah, to do it. And that pushed him over. So featherweight, as usual, is going to be. Fucking amazing! Dude, it's always one of the best divisions in the sport. I can't I love wait. It. Saturday is going to be Saturday is going to be amazing. And watching all of these matches, I'm so glad that they're super good with uploading these matches almost immediately after they happen. So if you don't catch it live, you can catch the replay by the end of the night. Some of these matches will go through, so it'll be really interesting. So let's jump over to lightweight bracket one of four, four fucking brackets, killer killers and each one of these like scary guys from each division is in a separate bracket so edwin najmi you know he's already into the second qualifier there you have uh, celso venetius on the other side first round against sinestro espen Mathieson versus michael lira yo that's, that's gonna what be... we're gonna say that's dope we get to see that we get to see that regardless I, I really want to know like how they're seated because I don't understand how Espen is above. I don't know if I. So Lira. we've talked about this before. I don't know if this is the seating or just where they're where they're numbered because we've seen some really weird seatings before. Yeah, I don't know how it works. I'd love to like talk to somebody about from might, the IBJJ. It might be a point thing. It may be it. some. It may be just a random. I don't think it's a random numbering, but there's some weird numbers here. I think we're gonna see. Najmi take he's gonna be one of the guys fighting in the all the way to the semis. It's Najmi, or it's quarters. Espen, or it's um I think we might see Lira. Najmi versus Celso. You think Celso and Najmi are gonna go? Celso for bracket is a one? tough guy to beat. He is just mean. And he's gritty, he's been around for a long time. He's a veteran. He's, he's got that so, veteran swag to I him. mean, multiple time world champion as well. Hard guy to beat. I think we're going to see because Lyra and Espen are on the same side as Celso. That's going to be a hell of a match. Whoever I think, has to I go think against we'll, him. I think we'll see that match, and then we'll see Najmi face the winner. I think. I mean, if he gets, if Najmi gets put out in one of these first two qualifier rounds, it, it'll honestly, everybody is going to be shocked. Oh yeah, well, Najmi's. We saw him at ACBJJ recently, and he looked he, good. He's, he's on the upswing now. Yeah. He had a few matches where he was not looking too good, and he's just like kicking now. 
So that's the first bracket for lightweight, the second bracket for lightweight. This is a Lucas Laprise bracket to lose, honestly. Mm-hmm. I think so. I think you, that's correct. You can't. You can't say anything else other than it's his bracket to lose. There's some good guys, but I think of of the four brackets, I think this is, yeah, it's it's, it's Lepre's bracket to lose. I think Lepre I mean, takes Jake this McKenzie, whole bracket. Jake McKenzie again was looking on point with his deep half. It's a little bit different from what you normally see when you think of a normal deep half. Main's looking at it and he's like, "Oh shit, that is Jake McKenzie right there." Yeah. Uh, Le- I think we see. I think Either, we might see McKenzie yeah. versus Lepre in the what would be a quarterfinal. Would that be a quarterfinal? Yeah, it'd be a quarterfinal. Yeah, in one of the quarterfinal. No, that's a semi. No, because there's four brackets. Oh yeah, that's right. So that's a quarterfinal. Quarter. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think I think Lepre takes it. I just think he's he, with how he's looked recently and just he's fucking Lucas Lepre. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's that's uh that's hard to to bet against. Here's another one that's going to be interesting because there are so many tough. Dudes in bracket three, Michael Lange, Jan Cabral. Uh, where do you see Jan Cabral? Oh, but that's gonna see. He's got to go in. Yeah, he's got to. He's got to get through Bispo, Diego Bispo. Yeah, who's a tough competitor? But again, they're gonna run into Lange. They're going to already have competed and have to go against Lange. Yeah, and then Tommy Pulkenen and Hanato Canudo is the second qualifier match. Or so we're guaranteed or, or, to see that as well. Oh, and on the other side of the bracket, we have Mashahira Ma- Iwasaki. I'm getting better, Josh. Good it's, job. it's a slow burn, Good but I'm getting job. better. After after 29 episodes, and we're getting there. I mean, at Europeans, he looked great. He looked amazing. That's, I mean, that, he put on the best performance at Europeans we've ever seen him do. And then you have uh, you have Victor Silvero, Silviero and uh, Alex Cabanas. I probably said that wrong. I'm going to say Alex Gisbert. There we go. That's the actual last name there. So I think would it be we probably I think Iwasaki. I, this and is Lange. how I'm going to put it. The for the final four of bracket three, we're going to have Iwasaki versus Silviero. We're going to have Michael Lange versus Hanato Canuto, and then ooh, I know. Yeah, Lange is going to be Canuto, and yep. Iwasaki's going to take it, and then we're going to have... Ooh, you think Iwasaki beats Lange? No. I think it'll be a super close match, and he'll take a lot of energy out of him, but I think Lange will move on. Okay, and that's what, I thought. Of that's course, what I thought, too. But of course, bracket one and bracket three will probably compete against each other. Good uh, luck with that. Here, go down to the, the quarterfinal matches. Yeah, so winner of Matt 8. Where's Matt 8? Uh, go up to 1. Are they on mat eight? They're on mat eight. Okay. So, yeah, one versus three and two versus four. So, again, as – ooh, that is a tough-ass first round. We are under the fourth bracket of the division. JT Torres versus Marcelo Mafra. First qualifier round. That's going to be dope as fuck. But JT's going to take that. And then you have Johnny Tama versus Hugo well, obviously Marquez. Obviously, JT's going to take it, Josh. You've picked JT to take the world yes, this year. I, uh, yes, but I'm still saying I, you can't just be like, oh, uh, 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 well, maybe. And it's like, bro, you already picked the guy to win. I'm aware of this, but still, it's going to be an awesome match. And honestly, given his bracket, uh, I would I would agree with you. He is the I think he is the front runner to take the bracket. Well, Again, you have good, Johnny some Tama, good, who's a solid guy. competitor. You have Hugo Marquez. They're going against each other in the first qualif- in this, Yeah, the first qualifying round. You have Rodrigo Freitas and Vitor Oliveira from GF Team, amazing competitor. Vitor Matos and Johnny Souza from Alliance. All of these lightweight brackets are Dude, fucking insane. This is a, cra- it's a crazy bracket. It's so fucking insane. It's you think, great. You think Torres takes the whole deal? I think he takes the entire thing. So you're having. We're going to see some crazy one and three and two and four. So go back up to to bracket two again. Go down, right here. Who did I say? We're going to have Lepre and and uh, and JT as a semifinal. Ooh, that's exciting. Spicy, as they might say, Josh. And that's that's the real big hump that he's got to get over. Is yeah, Lepre? You got to beat Lepre. Well, he's the last year's champion. Yeah. Good luck. But I think he's got it. All right. So. So that does That's it for lightweight. Lightweight, lightweight is awesome. Again, dude, this is so exciting. I love the world championships because you look like, oh, this guy's going to be against this guy. Oh, this guy's top guys all the way through. 
So onto the middleweight bracket again, four brackets for middleweights. Yes. Loaded. It's huge. So Langacker's got a first round bye. Uh, who else has a first round bye that Gabriel you know, Arges. Arges does? Let's see. Delson Raimondo. Okay, he's going in. Dante Leon's I think, gotta go in, but I think he's gonna go he's gonna go fairly far. Uh Nathan Mendelssohn, I believe, is going to take his match against Gabriel Fonseca, and he is going to Ooh, that uh Who you think takes bracket one? Argus. Argus. I mean it's again it's a it's a hard bet against Argus, who's you know, returning champion. So why why wouldn't you? Why would you ever bet against the champ, Josh? So that's I mean, the first they bracket. They might look really shitty. That's why. I mean, you know, but our second is a bracket. Safe bet. We have T- Marcus Tinoco in that. Ooh. It's the buy for the. F- it's the, gets the first round buy uh, versus Oliver Geddes and uh, Caio Almeida Silva. I think Geddes gets <laughs> oil. That. Oil Geddes. Oil Geddes, Josh. I think we get Geddes versus Tinoco. In that second round, second Kyle round Silva there. is a tough competitor, though. That's the thing. That'll be interesting. I'm, uh, I'm pulling for Ali to get a, a dog bar, get that top half guard knee bar. I'd love to see it, dude. I'd, I'd love me I'd some love knee bars. Hits it. Uh, but he's gonna run into Tanoko, who's been on fire recently. And we got Hanger in this bracket as well, on the other side of the bracket. And he's got a tough match with Alex Balding, who is he looks almost like DJ Jackson, not like. Build wise, that's a, that's a good way to put that though. They're build wise, yeah. they're roughly the same build. They're very, uh, they're not like super short, but they're smaller and they're stockier, and tough guys to beat. But I think we're gonna see a rematch in bracket two of the Brazilian Nationals with Marcos Tinoco versus Yago de Souza. That one's gonna be a real n- uh, a nail biter. Bet. You think who you think gets it, Tinoco or Souza? I think if Yago stays on his game, he could actually beat Tonoko. But he's got to stay in his game the he's whole match. He's got to stay on it. If not, Tonoko takes it easily. I'm going, I'm going with Tonoko. I just think he's, a, I think he's the safer bet in bracket two. So on to bracket three. John Satava has got to compete in, and he's going to run into Otavio Souza. Tough match to go into. Jamie Canuto what? is either going to run into Servio Tulio or Majid Hage. Canuto, I think... Canuto is a lock, I think, for going forward. Personally, you personally. got Thomas. You got Thomas Keenan in this bracket as well. But I think that yeah, I think Canuto takes bracket three. I think that's a safe bet. It's it's a uh, well, Manuel Hibamar is also a really tough competitor from Unity, so it'll be interesting. So we'll probably get Canuto and Manuel in the round round of sixteen for bracket three, possibly. I think we're gonna have an Octavio Souza and Jamie Canuto. Uh, final of bracket three, and I think Kido takes it. I think Otavio is gonna game it, and and win. he's a tough guy. You, really to think Ota- you think Otavio takes it? Yes. All right. It's a tough. It's middleweight. It's still tough to to compete. Uh, he's a, a hard guy to beat. Going down to bracket four, Claudio Calazans gets uh, bumped forward, as does Dara O'Connell and Igor Dantes. I really want to see Rolando Sampson versus Claudio Calazans. Even though they're technically the same team, I want to see that match. I really want to see you that match. Do you think they'll they'll bow out, or you think we'll see it? I think we'll see it. Ooh, really? I mean, I don't think they really could train together too much, but we'll see. But Isaac Behens is on the other side. You're going to call him Isaac, not, not Izaki? It, it's going to change like every okay. single time. I said Izaki in last night's you, recording. You threw gonna, me off because I was like, I thought we were going with Izaki. Oh, oh fine. Izaki. Izaki uh, He's He's going to take this entire bracket. Oh, yeah, I agree. He's going to beat Calazans. He, he beat him. He's beaten him before. Yep, he has. And I think we're going to end with Calazans and Behentz in the finals of bracket four, and that'll put them into the quarterfinals. Yeah, but. Again, Behentz takes that, and again, I picked Behentz last night, if I'm not mistaken, to take the entire bracket. No idea, Josh. I forgot. <laughs> we went through a lot of hours, names last night. In the 12 hours we were recording, we went through a lot of names. I think we're going to end up with, yeah, because it's 1, 3, 2, and 4, so we're going to end up with Behentz versus Gabriel Argus. Ooh, that's a good match. I'm going to double-check that. I'm going to make sure that Gabriel Argus is not in... Uh, no. Yeah. So I think we're going to end up with Behentz versus Tinoco, which will be 
amazing. And then we're going to end up with Otavio Souza versus Gabriel Argis. So those semifinals are going to be crazy good. And then that, that's a, that's a metaphor for the entirety of the event. Oh, these semifinals are going to be crazy. Well, you never know. Some of these can be real snoozers. You think, oh, this is going to happen, and then they just uh, they completely shit the bed on. Dude, that they one. were some at the Nogi Worlds that were like that. Like, yeah. oh, this match is going to be great. This match was garbage. Exactly. Okay, jumping over medium heavy. This one's a little bit smaller, where you have uh, two. You only have two full two brackets. Two brackets, but still. Let's see, Nick Schrock's over here. Ooh, that's going to... That is a rough draw. So, Nick Schrock or Bruno Oliveira, whoever wins that match... Get the honors of competing against Hulk. you got to go against Hulk. Ow. <laughs> Lucas Barbosa. Oh, man. Tiago Silva and Charles Negramonte first round. Solid match. Mateus Denise versus Diogo Silva. We're going to potentially see Charles Negromonte versus Mateus Denise, which that'd be a good match. Hell yeah, it would. Let's see. Mateus Souza from NS brother. Ooh, Hudson. Mate- Ooh, Dude, this whole bracket no. again is so good. We have Matt, Matt Layton Le- Ooh, versus Samir Darmo. No, that's a sure oh, Sammy, Sammy Darmo. Wow. It's blown up and you still can't read it. I messed that up bad, Josh. I got, I have no excuse for how poor that was. <laughs> Matt, yo, we could see Matt Layton with his crazy guard versus Hudson Mateus. That Look. would be good. I think we, I think that'll probably what we'll see. I yo, think we'll that, see Mateus that. versus Layton. Mateus with his like relentless guard passing style, and he's got a great guard too. And then you have Layton oh, yeah. with that sick guard. That will be super awesome to see. And let's see, Mateus Spindarelli. That's who it was. Or right. Spirandelli. There we go. And not Souza, but that'll be interesting. Ooh. I, I I don't even want to pick Matt Layton and Hudson Mateus. That's just going to be wild. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't I have to though. I'm going to say we have Mateus versus Charles Negramonte. Oh no, no. Yeah, I think versus Hulk. Yeah, Mateus I think I think Hulk takes. Hulk. I think Hulk takes this bracket. Ooh, I mean, it's a stacked bracket, but I think Hulk takes it. I don't know, dude. He looked good. He's looking absolute. Like he's looked good. He didn't do his weight though. Oh, he didn't, did he? At, in Brazilian at, Nationals. No, he, no. Just did the, he just did the absolute. Yeah, I forgot about that. So on to bracket two of the medium heavyweights. Ooh, Orlando Montero. Marillo Santana, top of the bracket. I know. And we're going to have Marillo Santana, I feel, against Orlando Montero. And Montero's just been on a tear recently. You think uh, we see Hanato Cardoso versus Orlando in this one? No, because they're on the opposite sides of the bracket. That is how you read a bracket, Josh. My yes, bad. Yes, it is. Uh, we will see Hinata Cordoso versus Tarsus Humphreys, which will be wild. But I think we're going to have Tarsus versus Orlando Montero. and I think that's reasonable. Yeah, I, I can see that. going to take it. And then, you know, with that, what you're calling, it's going to be Orlando versus uh, Hulk. Versus Hulk, which would be a cool. They've competed against each other before, and I think Hulk won. I believe so. So I think they've competed pretty recently against each other. The past year, past couple of months. Yeah, like pretty recently. Yeah, so that'll be an interesting look. Now we get into heavyweight. I think Hulk takes the whole bracket. By the way, for yes, premium they, heavy. You 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 stated that just a second. Just ago making before sure, you Josh shoved eggs in your face. It's early in the morning, Josh. I'm eating some eggies. Okay, I have I I did not eat yet. I waited. I, I lounged in bed. You want some eggs? No, I don't want your burnt ass eggs. Okay. Rachel likes them that way, Josh. I can't I, help it. I don't care. So on to the heavyweights. <laughs> the heavy bracket. Oh man. Shanji, first round bye. This is what's gonna be this right here. Shanji, uh Roberto Torobal uh Torobas, great competitor. You gotta run into Shanji. I'm like Good luck, sir. Dog, sorry. He, he multiple time world champion. This is what's going to be wild. So Felipe uh, Pena versus Adam Wardzinski. Wardzinski made multiple mistakes. I felt against Pena while not sweeping and not just coming up top and just trying to stay ahead. Was this on at points. ACBJJ or was this? Yes. Yeah, ACBJJ thirteen, I think, in Long Beach, California. Yes, if I'm not mistaken. Or it was 12 in Kazakhstan. One of the, one of the recent ACBJJs. Oh, no, it was UAE, wasn't it? They've competed against each other so much recently that I can't even remember. But we're going to have a potential 
Shanji versus Felipe Pena match. That's exciting, Josh. That's an understatement. That is a little a, bit. That is an understatement. I'm trying to know solid, Josh. Yeah, whatever. Vitor Toledo versus Felipe Silva on one side. Demetrius Souza from Alliance is either going to compete against Josh Bolin or Tex Johnson. That'll be an awesome match to watch. I too. think we'll get. Te- I think we'll see Demetrius versus Tex. That'll be kind of cool. I'm I'm actually oh, pushing yeah. for. I kind of want Tex to go through, like just keep going and and sort of shake shit up. It'll be awesome to see. It'll. I, oh, Dude, I, this first bracket is is kind of not all not open, but there's I, a couple guys that can take this. Pena. I think Pena takes this bracket. Like it's a hard. Yeah, it's a I think, hard. I think bet. he gets Patch Sanji, and I think he takes if it. He's. Technically not a world champion because his title got stripped because of a, a doping thing. Josh is using little air quotes there. Uh, it's jujitsu. We let's all let's stop pretending. I mean, he more than likely. I want. I want to say that he probably did them. I think I anybody. Don't I don't care. Right. I don't care either. Honestly, like whatever. You're trying to heal up. Great. You want to keep competing. How did you chew so loud? You ripped that bagel off, and it was so loud. Not only did I hear it through the microphone, I heard it through my my headphones. Sorry, man. I'm really Dog, hungry. Dog, turn your head away at least. God damn, you are unprofessional. That's, <laughs> That's the first time in, thir- in 30 shows that I've chewed in the mic. Bullshit. Taco Bell episode? That was bad, actually. Okay, yeah, that yeah. was a lot of chewing in the mic. Yeah, they were, they were crispy tacos. But what else can Don't you do? Don't eat them. Eat them before. Jesus Christ. Christ. Bracket two, we got Keenan, Kai James, Cornelius in this bracket. We you got could have just said Keenan Cornelius. You Dude, his, do, his, Kai James is such a weird name. Keenan, like, Kai James, Cornelius. You want to call him Kai James? Like I call King him, Kai? I call him Keenan. King Kai James. I call him the Gee Wizard. He is the Gee Wizard, Josh. <laughs> uh, he gets he gets pushed through into the first qualifier. He either has to go against Inacio Neto or Rafael Lima. If he goes against Lima, I wonder if Lima will just bow out to give him a good chance to go through. I don't know. But it'll be interesting. But then you also have uh, Tim Spriggs right underneath of that. He, oh, man. We've I seen Keenan beat Spriggs before. We've seen him beat him multiple times. Yeah. But we've also seen Spriggs show up and beat him. We have, I think it's more rare, but we have, we've seen it before. I think oh that's gonna be that's gonna be an interesting match. Hopefully he doesn't really like burn himself out going against Briggs because I, I see that being bracket. being easy to do. But on the other side of the bracket, you have Patrick Gaudillo versus uh, Ari S. Fernandez from Haja Gracie. I mean, he's, we've seen him. We've seen him before. Yes, I can't. Uh, I can't recall where, but I know we've seen him recently. Europeans or okay, probably, something. Probably UAE. Euros. And then you have Jackson Souza. And uh, Helton Silva. So I think we're going to have a Patrick Gaudio versus Jackson Souza and Keenan versus the Tim Spriggs match. And then you're going to have Keenan versus Patrick Gaudio. I think it's Ga- it's Gaudio or it's Souza. I think Gaudio gets it done. So, yeah, I, I would agree with you. And I think it's Keenan versus. Keenan goes forward. And, again, I've called Keenan already as Keenan is going to – take it and he's going to beat I think yeah, I think his Sil- bracket Felipe looks Pena. really good to do that. I think I do not know if he'll get past Pena. That's my that's my that's one the big That's the finals, dog. That's I'm definitely, that's right definitely now, the finals. And I, I think he's going to get past When's him. the last time he's got past him? Has he gotten when past? When was him? the last time they competed? It's, it's been, been a while. while. It's been a while. If I, they have it all. Ah, uh, they have. I don't uh, I forget what it was. It might have been Nogi. Maybe it was know. Nogi, but you so you think Keenan takes it? I I want Keenan to take it, but I think it's, it's hard, hard to bet against, against, against Pena. Yes, yes, it's it hard. is. So I think that's the finals match. So onto the super heavyweight bracket for the men's black belts. Hey, guess what? It's only one bracket. How about that? A yo first round: Muhammad Ali versus Jared Dopp. They have a long-standing rivalry that started in like brown belt and moved over into black belt, and Muhammad has only gone more forward, like gotten better and jared because he's you know going through school and everything like that has not kept up as much so that'll be interesting to see how that turns out but the the next match down is gutenberg Pereira versus elliot kelly 
Elliot is a tough competitor. Tough, 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 tough competitor. Gutenberg, also a tough competitor. And really big, scary-looking guy. As we saw in Fight to Win Pro Maryland 70. Yes. Uh, I think we're going to have Gutenberg versus Muhammad, which will be a barn burner of a match. I think so. I think, I if think Elliot upsets him. Gutenberg, that'll be even crazier. Oh, I don't, It definitely will be, Josh. I, I kind of don't want to pick, but I'm going to. And uh, Igor Schneider or Charles Maguire is going to have to go against Nick Mergali, who, again, as, as Maine was saying, looks like a complete sociopath. When yes, he's getting ready yes. to compete, that's his like that's his that's his competing face. Like he looks like a sociopath in pictures, which is saying something. Well, then you've also got Leandro Lowe on the other side, and let's see, Rodrigo Hibero. Oh, this is the Guillermo whole bracket. Lima. Yeah, this is a one yeah, bracket. It's a one bracket one. Uh, Leandro Lowe is gonna push forward all the way through, and he is going to beat one of those four people: either Fernando Hayes, James Papalo. Uh, Felipe Trovo or Manuel Ambrosio. I think we're going to have another Mergali versus Lowe match. I think, yeah, we get Mergali and Lowe. But what I'm really interested in for this bracket is what the quarterfinals look like. You know, what, what happens on the Muhammad Ali, Jared Dobb, Gutenberg, Kelly, and uh, Mergali side of the bracket. One of those matches is going to be... All of those matches are going to be completely fucking insane. Yeah. So who do you think you think takes it? You think Lowe takes, Lo takes it? You think Margali takes it? I think Lowe takes it. I think I think Lowe takes it too. I, Margali is I'm always concerned again. He looked great I and hate, he's much bigger, but I hate betting against the the current guy. Well, he's the heavyweight last year's heavyweight champion. Ooh, we're in super, super heavy now. Right? Yes. I hate betting against the guy that's a it's a last year's world champion, but Lowe it just he's been so much more active. He's been so much he's just been doing so much more recently. I I haven't seen a ton of Margali. I'm hesitant to bet against him. So I'm going low. Could be Margali. Could be completely wrong, which wouldn't surprise anyone here. Not but at all. onto the ultra heavyweight bracket. There's two brackets for this one as well. RIP to Max uh Jimenez or Tanner Rice because whoever wins that match has to go against Bushesha. Good luck, so, sir. RIP. <laughs> So uh, you think I, that, see, I'm not even going to speculate. This Bruchesha is why I think is the seating is wrong because Bruchesha is nine. I don't think they're seated. I don't think it's that, just think... a weird. He hasn't. That's the thing. A lot of these guys have been competing through the year, whereas when have you seen Bruchesha? World, stop eating into the fucking mic. God, I hate you. You, we saw him at Worlds. That was that was it. Like, what have you seen him in last in ADCC? That might have been it. Yeah, that was like what eight months ago. That was October, November, something like that. Yeah, about eight months. Yeah, uh, I think he takes the entire thing, but you also have to. He's going to have to go against. I'm going to say we're going to see him versus Ottavio Nalati. Uh, Ooh, that'll be fun. I think I think he beats Nalati, but then Nalati's the other, a big dude. He's a big boy. Yeah, but. As is Bouchesha, and he moves. That yeah. kid he's can one of the truck. Bouchesha is one of the fastest guys at Ultra. And the thing down. is, he knows when to turn it on as well. He's like, all right, time to move. Well, he knows how to turn it on, and he's got that extra gear. When yes. he gets a hold of a guy, you're just like, what the fuck? That dude's 255 pounds, and he just lifts him. Of muscle. Yeah. So. And then on the other side, uh, Victor Honario, and then you have, uh, ooh, we're going to have a potential... Tiago Gaia versus Yuri. Oh man, that's gonna. Fuck, these are gonna be good. Josh, you gotta say the full name of the mic. Sorry, Yuri Samoyes versus Tiago Gaia. That's gonna be a great match. That's in the. the that's in the, the round of sixteen. That match, the winner of that match has to go against Victor Honario, which will be another crazy match. Let's see. Uh, ooh, I don't. I, I think Bucheja takes this bracket. Yes, Bucheja, and so on. <laughs> I mean, onto the second bracket. The second part of that bracket, anyway. You have Antonio Braganetto. Which is awesome to see him back. T- uh, Thomas McMahon versus Antonio Braganetto. Braganetto, if he's looking good, will be there. But then he's going to run into Zhao Gabriel Hosha. And then you have Luis Panza versus uh, uh, Carlos uh, Farias. Faria? Uh, Faria. Faria. Yeah. Sorry, I was not looking at the full name, and it got me with the dot, 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 and I had to Yeah, because he's got five names. Literally, he's got five names, and the last name is Far, dot, dot, dot. I think it's Faria. It is Faria. 
And then you have Ricardo Evangelisa versus Amelson uh, Gobi Jr. On the other side, you have Moku versus Gustavo Diaz. So who takes this side, and then who gets to fight Puchesha? <sighs> Zhao Gabriel. I mean, he's the last time we really saw him lose was against Bouchesha. Yep. I mean, if if Luis Panza goes forward, he was recently beaten by Zhao Gabriel. And then, you know, he's beaten Ricardo Evangelista. I don't I think he would beat the winner of he would beat Gustavo Diaz uh Diaz Diaz or Moku. Yep, I think I agree with that. I think that. we're gonna have another final of Zhao Gabriel versus Bouchesha. Yeah, and I think Bouchesha takes it again. So, and it's a different format now, so he's going to just come at him differently because that was five rounds of five minutes. This one's one round ten minutes. Yeah, it was ACBJJ back then. So, who do you, you even want to speculate now on the open class? Bouchesha. Bouchesha. Who's second place? Ooh. I think Keeney gets third. I don't know. Holt? I don't know. You have Lowe in there. I wonder mm. if Mergali's going to jump in. Shanji might jump in, who will definitely disrupt stuff. Ooh, I, th- I didn't think about Shanji. Uh, Tim Spriggs will probably jump in. There's going to be uh, DJ Jackson might jump in. Yeah, you forgot. Yeah. You forgot about. Wait, did we? I didn't see him, by the way. I wasn't going to say anything. I missed him. Unless we... his name was different. I didn't see him. He's at medium heavy? I believe so. Where is he? There he is. Oh, that's the first round. We totally missed. We totally missed his name. Yeah, because he's De Alonso, Jerome Jackson. And we. <laughs> I really wish it would just be as DJ Jackson. So I wish they just have regular names. No, in here. that's a awesome. That's going to be a hard ass match. Holy shit! I didn't even realize that. Marillo Santana versus DJ Jackson first oh, round. Shit. First fucking round. That's exciting. Oh shit! That might change my. Ooh. That might change my whole life, Josh. Ooh. Oh, that's going to be an awesome fuck. Fuck, that's going to be good. Holy shit. So on to the women's bracket breakdown for the 2018 IBJJF World Championships onto the Roosterweight division. Not a huge division. Only six people, but that's fine. I think returning champion Rikako Yuasa is going to go into the finals again. You have Auti Timoletto. You have Tasia Ferreira. And then she's, I mean, you already have Rikako in the semis. And she's going to either have to go against Tamira Zakino or Rayane, not even full name, from Gracie Baja. It says uh, Rayan Am- Amanda Carmo Dos. Rikako, I think, takes this. I agree. She's, ne- she's never multiple, bet against your champ. And she's multiple time, multiple weight class champion. She won it at the weight class above and this weight class last year. So it's a hard bet against her. And it's not a huge bracket. So... These ladies are going to be fresh. Yeah. On to the light featherweight bracket for the women. Talita Alencar gets bumped through to the quarters already. Mm-hmm. Returning champion. So does Gazeri Matuda. That Returning be champion. R- returning champion? From... Not for this weight class, but for another okay. weight class. Uh, Vanessa English. Is not, at so the... not returning champion at all. My bad, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vanessa English at the top of Talita Alencar's bracket, as well as uh, Saori Shibamoto and Luia Gluchowska. Patty Fontes is going to run into Talita Alencar. That's that's a definite. That'll be an awesome match. We've seen them compete against each other before. I think Talita takes it. I, I would agree. I think we have Talita versus Vanessa English in the semis on one side. I think she gets through Vanessa. I think I think we get through, we get Gazeri versus Talita Alencar again in the finals. It's going to be she's Gazeri's going to have a tough match with Sofia Amarante. But you also have uh, Christina Barlin on that one side. That'll shake some things up. Fiona Watson, Amanda Noguera. Oh, man. I th- I, hmm. Hmm. I, I think we do have Talita versus Gazeri in the finals. And uh, I'm going to go with Talita. I'm going to go with Gazeri. Oh, my God. <laughs> stop <laughs> eating. <clears throat> that was a bagel, Josh. I know. Stop eating. Jesus Christ. Christ. Anyway, on to the featherweight bracket. Who, let's see. Emil Thailand, who was previous year's champion, uh, automatically into the corners. Let's see. Do, do, do Heather Rafferty down on that same side. That's going to be a, an awesome match. Her versus er- Anna Carolina Schmidt. Ooh. I think we're going to have a. 
Heather think... Rafferty versus Emil Thailand match with Emil taking it. But on the other side, you have uh, Bianca Basilio, who has looked crazy good. And she's oh, going to have yeah. to go against Ray Alexander. That's going to be a fucking awesome match. Yep. Oh. That'll be that'll be one of the, I think that'll be one of the best matches for the women of the event. And then you have Karen Atunas, who is either going to have to go against Kristen Mickelson or Tammy Musumeci. We haven't seen in recent, I can't really pull it up, recent memory, Tammy Musumeci compete in a while. She's a tough competitor. I think we're going to have Bia Basilio versus Tammy, and Bia takes that. And then I think we're going to have Bianca versus Ami- uh Emily Thylen. I keep. I'm not sure how I'm pronouncing the name, and I think it's I, wrong. It's a. She's a Swedish name. So, yeah, are you sure? I'm pretty sure she has the little with the little flag next to her name. I think that's Sweden. <laughs> I think it's the IKEA flag, Josh. <laughs> uh, so, who do you think takes it? You think you think it's Thylen, or do you think it's Bianca Basilio takes it? She's just looked so good recently and been on fire. I think yeah. she takes it. I can't think of a bad performance she's had recently. No. Let's jump over to lightweight. I get another smaller bracket. Bia Mosquita is going to take on either Laura Halleck or Catherine Perrette. I think Perrette. she takes. I think Perrette gets that, and then I think that's going to be a Bia takes it from Perrette. That's going to be an awesome match. She's got great guard. She's got great top game, and then we're going to have ooh, Louisa Montero versus let's see Charlotte Van Bongartner or Jenna Ray Bishop. Jenna Ray Bishop also has been on fire. Like she looked great at Pans. Every time we see her, she's looked really good. That's going to be a tough match to decide. Luisa Montero is a tough, tough competitor. I think in the finals here we have Beatrice versus Montero. Or Bishop. Mm, that's a good I question. I think we're going to have Bia versus Montero. Honestly. Yeah, no, I, think, yeah I agree. I think Bia takes it again. She's just, she's also, when she found that next level, because she was losing to Dern a lot, and then she found that next level and never lost to Dern again. And that one time she, like, just attacked, 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 and came over and choked her, I believe. And then Dern disappeared from jujitsu, and Bia just kept on being awesome. So I think Bia takes lightweight. Going over to middleweight. Ooh, this is also uh, Anna Carolina's, Vieira's bracket. I think I think she takes the whole thing. So Aaron Hurl or Amanda Aliquin have to run into her and that's going to yep. be a, a tough mountain to climb then you have sarah black who is probably going to go against samantha lee cook i just want to call that now that they're going to go against each other so i think sam cook versus Vieira, and then you have raquel canudo versus leanne dietrich and hanata morea versus either caitlin huggins or jacqueline rodriguez de oliveira Yep. I think we're going to have a Vieira and... Canuto. Canuto finals with Vieira taking it. I agree. I think it'll be I think it'll be a good match in the finals, but I think that Vieira just gets it done. Absolutely. On to the medium heavy bracket. Again, a, a smaller bracket. Looks like a bracket of seven. Yes. Luana Alzugir is going in versus Andresa Sintra. Luana takes that. Then she's going to have that uh, Claudio... Claudio. Claudia... Anafre match, I think Luana's going to go into the finals. And then you have uh, Sabatha and uh, Monique Carvalho and Monique Elias versus Alejandra Gonzalez. I think Luana takes the whole thing. This is a tough division for me to call. I, I can see a path for her winning that. But again, I don't, I don't know, actually. She's... Multiple time, multiple weight world champion. It's hard to bet against. It's hard to that. get against the champ, but she hasn't been in the the scene for a while. And, and that's kind of that was kind of my thought. Is like, oh, it's hard to say because I don't know how how she looks lately. Again, never betting against your former champs, your champs. But I think we're gonna see a closeout. Honestly, I think Monique Elias and Luana will meet up in the finals, and we'll see a closeout with Luan yeah. taking it. I think that's Luana, correct. excuse me. Now heavyweight. Jessica Flowers versus Allison Tremblay. Tremblay. Flowers, I believe, takes that. Yep. And then you have Natalia DeJesus versus Nivia Mora. Natalia. T- Natalia. Man. Natalia takes that. Yeah. I think Maria Meljasic, uh takes it versus Yasina X Win Hugh. 
Is that even close or no? Yacinta. X when who? So it was close. I was close, man. Like three and out of ten. You have Fernanda Marzelli gets that bye. So ooh. I think we'll get Meliasic versus Marzelli. And I think I Maliasic, think, I think, will go into the finals versus Natalie de Jesus. But I think Natalie will I agree with that. We'll take is she is she still repping Unity? Apparently she's registered in Unity. That's wild because she I think she I think she's waiting until after Worlds because there was a little article that I think she's going to she Soul left. Fighter. I believe so. I believe we talked about it like a couple weeks ago on the yeah. show for news. So, so you think she gets it done and takes the championship? Yes. All right. On to the super heavyweight division. We've already stated before. Uh, it's, we think Porfirio takes this division. I think she takes it pretty handily. I think it's going to be her versus Andresa Correa. Cor- Correa. Yeah. There we go. That, uh, I think they've trained together, honestly, so I think it's going to be a closeout. Yeah, it's a bracket of five. Well, they're under different. They're oh, they're both, both alliance. alliance. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I looked at the wrong thing. So it's a bracket of five, I think. If not. Yeah, I think Andresa compete, Correa it's close it out. Any. And Tyani takes it. Tyani also takes the absolute. But I, I want every single woman in every single bracket to be in the absolute to make it some wild fucking 40 person. Josh, absolute. I want every absolute bracket to be full of every competitor, except I actually don't do absolute, so I'm kind of a hypocrite there. I love the absolutes. It's great. So Yeah, Josh, you were like a large gentleman for a while. Even, so it's awesome. That does it for the women. That does it for our all the brackets. So again. I'm Josh. I'm Maine. See you on the mats. As always, you can email us at thegrapplingrewind at gmail.com. You can check us out on Stitcher, iTunes, YouTube, and pretty much anywhere you can find Facebook podcasts. We're on Facebook, Grappling Rewind. Instagram. Grappling Rewind. Twitter. Grappling Rewind. Reach out to us on social media. If you got something that you want us to cover, you want to clarify, you know, we are here. You want to tell us we're idiots. Hey, let us know. You want us to pronounce your name correctly? Let us know. Subscribe. Subscribe on the YouTube page. Leave us a review. Helps us out a lot. It helps us out. And, you know, it eventually will help you out. We like to give back. We're doing this as something that isn't done. So help us help you. Again, as always, I'm Josh. I'm Maine. And this is the Grappling Rewind Podcast. We'll see you on the mats.